damn, Gary. Some serious gourmet shit. What flavor is this? That's right, it's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the Decadent, Feathers of Liberty, Vanilla Infused Flavored Coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the Dark Roast FNT blend of the Fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. GeekGrindCoffee.com. Use discount code Nerdrotic. Welcome, travelers, to the fringes of reality, where the strange and mysterious meet, and the thin veil between fact and fiction is torn. Welcome to the Forbidden Frontier. We're back. We're back. We're back, baby. Ah, yes. We made it. We didn't get mm-hmm. disappeared off into the woods by some well, hairy giant ape man. Gary, are you okay? Are you okay? It seems I'm... like the sun sucked some energy out of you. Was it the eclipse? Uh, it eclipse. was the eclipse, man. That eclipse, eclipse yesterday. Uh, well, I mean, you know, people like, hey, nothing happened. Same, ta- same thing with like 2012. But you know what? The Antichrist was just born yesterday. We still have some time. But he was born yesterday. Friday 13th. Uh, full eclipse of the sun or the ring of fire effect, I guess, which that was, was pretty cool, pretty damn cool to watch. It was pretty cool to watch with the kids. I've never seen one. Uh, and it's amazing how much light is still out with like the moon covering like 98% of the sun. The yeah. That is, massive like, ball get, of yeah. fire is pretty, uh, pretty amazing. bright. It's pretty bright. When well, I had some yeah. really cool, like patriotic glasses, uh, that I got from my son's school and we uh, checked it out and the shadows were the coolest part. The shadows yeah, were that weird. Was rad. That yeah. was really Thanks cool. to your videos. I saw that. Damn, yeah. cheers. Cheers. And it, it's back in April. It's back in April. So uh cool. I guess the anti antichrist will be born in April. I'm not really well, sure. If it's a Friday oh, the that 13th, works. is that is that part of the deal or no? I'm sure it was. I mean we just up. came off of it was like the boxing day for jihad day. Right. So yeah. And uh <laughs> the stars align. They really did. The stars aligned. Yeah, during a holy war, but yeah, I'm sure everything's going to be fine. Yeah, uh, I'm a little under the weather, so still I can talk uh, a little bit. Uh, that doesn't mean I, I'm not a wuss like as though. I keep working, I keep going. Let's do this. I'm ready for some missing four one one, some creepy stories, big hairy dudes or um, aliens. Not really sure. Some strange stories. A- Adam overachieved on this episode. I'm gonna. He better kill it because he said. Right, he's now you're putting me on glass. Oh shit! Yeah. I'm, I'm ready for. Well, it. We that's should save the best for last. Then if that's, that's my job. Okay. I am kind of excited. I am, I am kind of excited. Uh, and we are also a week. Uh, I'm a week away from uh, CPAC, which is not the conservative one. It's <laughs> the uh, CPAC? It's the, the other CPAC. Conservative orgy fest. Wait, no. Sorry. No, this one's the debaucherous uh, uh, ancient civilization investig- investigator orgy fest okay so oh, okay different crowd <laughs> different cl- crowd they get loincloths out they they oh, make my. megalithic structures and have sex around them <laughs> that's that's what i heard uh you know <laughs> jimmy that's almost jimmy corsetti like and graham hancock are leading it uh with massive ayahuasca like raves it's like an ayahuasca rave that's what it is uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to be there. I'm like, why is he doing this to me? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's next weekend in Palm Springs. We're still going to have a Forbidden Frontier. It 
we're still having one next week. I'll be uh, in the, the hotel conference. room just coming off the conference, and yeah, we'll do one uh, next week. How you doing, Quarter Black Garrett? Doing good, man. Uh, just carried the team today on Sunday Fun Day with as an X-ray. It was pretty great. Does your back hurt? It was, yeah. Always hurts carrying the team, but uh, just he, kidding. He really I don't did. ever do it. It's just <laughs> I got one time. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing good. Editing a video. Go watch our last video if you haven't already. That's it. I'm ready to get there into you this. Go. Creepy. I, it's creepy stuff. Yeah, it's creepy, weird stuff. Uh, I got a whole breakdown if we want to go through the like kind of the setup of what it is, but we can after. Yeah, yeah. Intros. After uh, intros. Uh, good evening. Good late evening, Adam Krigler. Of Hello German there. descent. I'm also I'm and Swedish, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um I'm also in white. video. Oh Whoa, there you go. A little, a little something different. Yeah. So I, I got a gimbal recently and I freaking love it. It's awesome. And I can like set it to like pan and like take time lapses and stuff. But I went for a hike. I, I've been wanting to show my forest to people and like there's videos of people walking around the woods collecting mushrooms they get like crazy views and i'm like you know what i got a beautiful forest i'm gonna i'm gonna do this and i just took like a an hour and a half walk through my forest just filmed the whole thing and i've just kind of been editing it down to like a nice little preview to show people what my forest is like and it's beautiful you gotta watch out there you can't be out there alone no yeah. there's a whole list of things that it's funny i was out alone for a couple hours and i and i didn't even tell my wife i just like she was she was home oh. and I'm like because it's like right there right so I'm just like walking around the forest and I come back in and she's like where were you you know and I'm like oh you know I was just out in the forest he's like you got to tell me and I'm like yeah I probably should and then I go and like <laughs> sit down I sit down and I like start I wanted to because I had watched a bunch of stuff but I wanted to like write out the stuff that I was going to talk about and like the guy kept hammering home they were always alone in the forest always alone and i'm like uh -huh. shit that, that was me earlier today shit uh -huh. i should not at least tell my wife yeah <laughs> as as sad as gone. we would be that would be awesome for the show if you went missing 411 on us that would be oh my god horrible. on the missing 411 episode yeah, yeah. don't put that energy out the there the I still, there's still time I just <laughs> move. Move. wait where do you go <laughs> what are those lights it's zorbu no it's zorbu <laughs> <laughs> ah! My butt tingles. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you made it back and Zorbu didn't get you or the big hairy guy. Me too. Mm -hmm. Named Michael. <laughs> they work together. Oh, bye. They work together. <laughs> it's <a> conspiracy. Oh. <laughs> uh, Sorry, you threw that up for me. It was beautiful. Goo, I did, and I didn't even mean to. Hello. Hello. Um, I have survived walking through an abandoned hospital. I did it again uh, on Saturday after FNT. That was really fun, honestly. Uh, besides the fact that I could have gotten killed by crack addicts or you fentanyl alone? zombies. Uh, that time I was, I was live streaming it and it probably wasn't a good idea. The first time was with Mark. The second time, I mean, I can show you just even like stills from me just walking around. I mean, um, the both of y'all going into these we, locations we would have, alone. We could have both been missing 411. I know. The two of us were just, just not a good idea. But hey, uh, it was it was really fun. Um, I think the chat had a lot of fun with it. So this is the, the cafeteria. Isn't it crazy how these abandoned buildings, no. they'll no completely I can yeah, leave no everything audio. there. Oh, there's more. Oh, oh there we go. go. They'll leave just like, desks one. full of paperwork they'll leave all kinds of stationery they'll leave Yo, medical okay. equipment mm -hmm. this, this what area is the, it right here uh this was at like uh 11 in the morning oh am okay so it's just 11. like in the it's middle of the black yeah the of the place. i got more footage of course the day before is that a face? i don't know i look hope down not. the hallway look really close down the hallway no, don't oh, say wow. that. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it it was a uh, pretty scary. So, did you? Was it scary because you scared yourself, or did it, you? It did anything weird happen? I heard like little pitter patter foot steps, and someone put like at so a certain time stamp. You heard voices, or was it? Ooh. I didn't want to listen to it. Here. Calling that number. Oh, 
it was actually my that was I don't you right that, that was you <laughs> come on stop that was you <laughs> that was you <laughs> get out of here <laughs> So they have how many you're straight up phasmophobia in this you didn't have anything though like you need to go no, in there with i need some, an like... emp or the 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 thing that measures i don't know what that's called what again dude you, you need yeah. to go in there with a ouija board you need and start quit. you need to be go in there with a ouija you know board well then why do this you know i mean you, you, you gotta board. call the spirits out yeah you gotta ghost no. adventures that shit no I mean, I, I did as much we, as I we could. We listened to Father Malachi Martin. Okay, he said you don't invite True. the you don't. Okay, you don't. You don't. And and when I got into certain areas, the the service dropped dramatically, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Did, did your battery drain well? on your phone? No. No. Okay. Thank goodness. But yeah, I'm alive. I'm alive. It was fun though. I would do it with you guys, but I would never go off on my own. Hell no. I would go there in there. Five. I would there tell them to go floors. in there. Yeah, you gotta go, go in. There. You gotta go at like one a.m. Though, come on, midday, eleven a.m. I was sleeping. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> that was in the states, right? I'll, I can tell you where it was after the show. Okay. Yeah. So it was yeah. in the states. I mean, an abandoned hospital in certain states is not a surprise. We're just <laughs> when people, <laughs> the way There's certain things are going. A lot, a lot going on. Not in my state, though. Not my state. Uh, well, I'm glad you made it too, yeah. and you're not missing 411. Or we gotta, you know, send spiritual advisors to go find you or pull you out uh, mm -hmm. of a debate. You ever see Poltergeist, X-ray girl? Uh, I, no. What? Oh, you gotta put that on the list and move it up. Okay, that list needs to be that needs to be watched before Halloween. Okay, because I was gonna watch Friday the 13th next. I should have watched on Friday the thirteenth, but you know. Uh, yeah. Definitely watch <laughs> that one too. Polter Poltergeist is awesome. Yeah. What? And it was PG. It was PG when it came out. Just keep that in mind. Nineteen eighty-two yes. version. Okay. I watched it the day I graduated from sixth grade in elementary school. Real dead bodies in that movie. Yeah. Shut yeah. no. Yeah, they used real corpses. <laughs> well, that's not unusual. Back in the old, old days of Hollywood, those skulls were real. Yeah. Because they'd be like display skulls for doctor's offices and stuff, and then they just use yep. those as props. Those are expensive. I want a full set. Of actual full, you want a full yeah. set of skulls? How do you get no, a no, full no. set of skulls? I don't know. They're all really really expensive. <laughs> They're really expensive. But we had bones in our... Um, school uh that you can like learn us like the bone i'm okay stuff. with the perfect replica you can get replicas of the paracas skulls uh the, the long long guided skulls yeah you one. can get them on ebay yeah which i'm thinking about that one i'm thinking cool. about. how much but, are, uh, they? are they eh, a couple hundred 300 bucks Dep right. but sometimes you get them in like a, a glass enclosure that There's looks like pretty good yeah. yeah so missing 411 yeah. Yes. We did. Oh this goodness. is part two of yeah. our missing four one one episode. If you want to listen to that, go listen to that later. Uh, where we get into it. So David Politis is a a detective. Or he was a detective. Former Reed, detective. Yes. Former detective. Yeah. And um, people started people started coming up to him and and yeah. going, "Hey, it was a it was actually a, a park ranger that said, hey, there.' He's there also some... a former like Bigfoot, big time Bigfoot investigator. Yeah. Still does that." Still a little does bit, that, but so uh, a park ranger came up to him and said, "Hey, you're in, you used to be an investigator. There's a, a lot of weird stuff that goes on in these parks that we it seems like it doesn't get tracked very well. Could you investigate in some of this stuff?" So he started looking into these disappearances and strange uh, occurrences where people would just disappear, and sometimes they'd reappear, and sometimes they wouldn't, and sometimes they would find the body, but it would be in a location that there was no way that that body could get to. So mm -hmm. he started investigating all of these disappearances and then found a bunch of commonalities. And I'll go through these commonalities before we get into the stories, because we have a few stories. Adam has, idea. has a good number. So just to kind of set the base for everybody. So one, remote location. So it's usually in a state park, in a forest. Uh, there'll be, like this last time we talked about a story where it was a, a father and his son went on a Boy Scouts trip out in the woods, the the boy went from the fishing spot back to the camp, 
and never was seen again. So stuff mm -hmm. like that. Weather conditions. So it could be storming, snow, stuff like that. Uh, canine tracking issues. So when the person goes missing, they the, these tracking dogs will be unable to track them down. Either they don't smell them at all where they should be, or they get they track it way off course and then don't aren't able to finish. Yeah. And yeah, like, this was oh, I was gonna say this was the reported in ninety five percent of the documented cases, which is the most common commonality out of all the cases. Uh, the noises and strange trail. sounds. That's another thing that other witnesses have reported around there. Uh, let's see. Um uh clusters uh, um uh boulders. Oh, uh, granite fields, rock. Yep. Is is one of them. Um I have a couple more here. Um yep. they're by themselves as we said earlier mm -hmm. when they disappear. Uh they're often found near water or disappear close to. Mm -hmm. Uh they often have disability or an illness whether it's an obvious one or like a hearing ailment stuff like that where you can't see. Yep. Um victims are found in areas previously searched. Mm -hmm. uh, or locations that are yeah uh, missing clothes or clothes that have been removed from the body um, and yeah often unknown unknown cause of death yeah. mm -hmm. also a lot of drowning uh, I, I watched this uh, this channel that water. did a great breakdown by a lot of waterways yes mm -hmm. uh, Lore Lodge if you guys haven't watched it you should go watch this channel. It's a pretty good channel. And he breaks it down really well. He he does all of his own research. So he doesn't just read the book. He goes to the actual cases and like backtracks and researches them again. Uh, and he he does a great kind of explanation. There's a lot, there's thousands of cases on the missing 411. And they're not all necessarily uh, extremely strange. There's some that are... Uh, sorry, there's people like right outside my door. There's some that just seem like there's just a regular kind of miss. It's a party. <laughs> my brother's over with his kids too, so it's perfect. That's cool. Um, <laughs> they're kind of missing persons that they could be explained in some ways. And in fact, they, he went back behind and researched again, and some of them were explained. Um, but some fit a lot of these qualities and are completely unexplainable. And just and I have I have one I'm sure Adam you have a few uh, to go into so we can we can get into those. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I mean I I can I I have four and they all link together. Um, I mean I guess I'll, I'll just I'll just start because this this is really uh, it, it was interesting to me because you guys you, we decided to all kind of pick one and and research it right so. I picked one and it happened to be in a zone in Colorado that wasn't on the map that you shared x-ray that, that, uh, with all those little spots. And I was like, Oh, cool. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to try to dig into something that isn't on this, the radar of the normal, uh, spots. And it turns out I have, I've been here. It, it about, um, four years ago, my roommate from New York, he actually got a spot in Colorado right outside Cortez. And Cortez is it's just northeast of the Four Corners, right? Where Arizona, uh, New Mexico, Colorado, and Nevada. No, is it Nevada? No, Utah, uh, where they meet. And I was like, okay, cool. So I, I've been in this spot. So I was familiar with the area. I've, I've been in these woods and, and actually went to, uh, what was the national park? The... Uh, Mesa Verde National Park. So I've, I've been there and I actually went to these cliff de uh, dwellings that I've actually talked about it on this show, these, these cliff de dwellings. And it turns out there was a large group of visitors that were like, you know, just tourists that were in Mesa Verde National Park that went missing in the same spot that I was at in these cave dwelling spots from the Pueblian uh, from 1200 uh, AD, so this was this was kind of like mind blowing, and this wasn't even the things that I was looking into. So it it all starts actually very recently in 2022. So these are newer cases. So July 17th, 
And you know what? I'm going to share my Google Maps right now so you guys can see. So if you could bring that up, I'm going to I'm going to kind of go through. So this is Mesa Verde right here. All right. Down. At, oh, you can't see my mouse, but you can see when I hover over it. Right. OK, that's good. So this is Mesa Verde. And now this is where I was at down in this cliff palace. Those are the cave dwellings right there. So I've been into these spots and it was this national park that a huge group went missing. Now, I had I kind of found that out near the end of researching uh, what I was what I was doing so it was kind of like I didn't wasn't able to find more about that group and he didn't go into details because he was focused more on Durango oh. and the surrounding areas areas of Durango so this this whole mountain range right here there's something going on here uh, and this is this is from uh, what's it Paul right Dave no David David Pilates, David Pilates right so it starts at around uh, outside the San Juan National Forest. There's a lake in here that was there was a I have it written down the uh, the Hard Rock 100 race. Okay, there was this guy named David Lamthatch. Okay, July 17th, 2022. There was this race there, and this guy is 23 years old. He's a mountain runner. All these people are really fit. Uh, everyone that I'm I'm gonna talk about right now, but this guy was a mountain runner. Uh, and he was volunteering at this race that was being held in this area uh, just north of the San Juan National Forest. Body so of water the race, right there. Body of water. It was it was just at a body of water. And he, he decided after the race ended, he was going to go for a run himself. He was just volunteering. He wasn't running. And he went for a run. And he never came back. No one knew what happened to him. They went looking for him. And they found his cell phone just sitting in the middle of a, of a trail like, deep into the into the trail and that's it no to this day no one's seen him and this was july 17th of 2022 so just last year oh okay God, so now so three months later um a little further uh southwest okay into into these mountain peaks over here there's a lot of peaks in this zone just northwest of durango now if you if I come closer all right so madden peak this is kind of where a lot of people would come in and then go from from here. There's like a lot of uh, different peaks that a lot of people like to. Uh, Durango is known for people who love the outdoors. And this whole area right here is just beautiful and filled with different peaks that people love to go. Uh, so David, uh, David Lund, 29, October 1st, 2022. This guy, valid Victorian. Uh, gra he graduated college with honors. Uh, just all ultra athlete. This guy was a freaking marathon runner. He was training to do um, not just a regular marathon, but a what was it called? Uh, a six peak marathon. So you actually run through six different mountain peaks at and as the marathon. It's not just like flat marathon. So it's like the like a crazy marathon. That's hardcore. Run. Yeah, that's that's oh, miles miles crazy with, with freaking mountain peaks. So this dude is like, he's like top 1% of runners. This guy's like, you know, peak physical condition. He's 29. Um, I don't have any pictures of him, but so he goes to Madden Peak. All right. And he disappears. No one knows what happens to him. Um, they bring up cadaver dogs. Same thing. They, they actually, they couldn't find his trail at all. And yeah, well, guy, somebody brought that up in the, in the chat. They were like, maybe a mountain lion. And yeah, right. You would think that. But then when the cadaver dogs come and right. they can't track him, you you would think there would they be. Would smell the, they would smell blood. That's what they're Yes, for. there would be a trail. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So uh, this guy was, was also known for being a stickler for safety and n never ran off trail. So he was always on trail and the cadaver dogs never picked up anything. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that's October. Uh, in October 1st, 2022, and still to this day, no one knows where, where he's at. Now, June 24th, 2023. Now, this is recent. Man, you know, this really year. Wow. Recent. Yeah. So Ian O'Brien, another marathon mountain runner, like all of these guys so far are just like really great shape peak runners. 
Um, maybe that speaks for their overconfidence in, in going into these zones and like who knows, but it there's a lot to this this one especially. This this one was weird. So this guy's from the Catskills Mountains, which is the East Coast Mountains, moved to the West Coast, was living in Page, Arizona, and frequenting these peaks. So he knew these peaks really well. And he uh, what was the peak? Hesperus. So that's actually a little here it is. Hesperus Mountain. So this guy loved this mountain and like this whole area, right? You could kind of see it's in the same zone of this whole what what we're talking about right here. So this uh -huh. guy, he's a mountain guide. Like he's the guy who teaches people how to like go into these zones. Uh, families and friends said that this guy was like a badass outdoorsman. This is at 13,000 feet, by the way, uh, this peak. And uh, he actually texted his, his girlfriend at the time when he was going to this peak, said, I'm going to send you a picture from the peak. And he did. He, he sent her a picture from the peak, and that was the last, last known um, communications with him. What's really weird about Ian O'Brien is just after that, both he had a GPS tracker because he was a guide. He, he was like a freak about safety, this guy. And he had a GPS tracker and a cell phone. Both of them turned off at the exact same time. Hmm. Like, like oh, that. Both of them do, 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 shut do, do, off do, 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 immediately. Yeah. Electronic like gear how, malfunctioning. Well, I mean, you know, you think, okay, maybe he fell. But like for them to both turn off immediately, that yeah. doesn't really make sense. And actually, this is when he gets into like maybe there's a UFO connection because they've known that uh you know U ufos can sometimes tweak electronics and whatever and turn them off so um they they do a huge search not finding anything and september 2nd just last month 2023 they found his body uh all the way over here oh, how many miles oh my god this, this, this is about far. so it's about three miles, three, four, I think, from Madden Peak to Hesperus Mountain. So that's like three miles there. But they found his body over here, north of kind of see this river right here between Aerodome yeah. and San Juan. So this is the East uh, Mancos River. Yeah, here it is. East Mancos River. So they found his body at the East Mancos River. And like over here, though. And it's like they... You know, they, they, he died of drowning. And this was, um, so, so yeah, David, David Paulides, he wrote a whole book about how the missing 411 found, were found drowning around water, like a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of one of the, the things that, uh, they, they found. And he actually looked into it and it turns out Ian O'Brien was a fantastic swimmer. And mm. even in the season that he was, he was in the, these mountain peaks. It wasn't like raging rivers. This river was very mellow at the time. It's not like it was a deep, crazy river. Yeah, it like was swept like them away or something. Like yeah, that. chill, mellow river. Like he could, if he was a strong swimmer, he would very easily be able to um, get to the side. Like again, with a lot of these cases, like did he fall? Did he hit his head and fall in the river and get carried downstream? Like it could be. Did he get you know, severely but, lost and? couldn't find his way back and when they found his body was there head trauma they he didn't say so i mm. feel like uh, they would they would have said. said yeah they would absolutely would have said okay so this is this is also kind of crazy so they find his body right on september 2nd the very next day september 3rd a man named james uh shadid 79 also in great shape now he's a lot older uh, all the three men that I talked about earlier are all under 30. Um, mm -hmm. David was 23. Uh, David Lund was 29. And Ian O'Brien was 28. So James Chef, uh, Shadid, he was actually east or west of Purgatory Resort. Okay. So you could see the first guy was found over by in between like San Juan National Forest over here by some rip, by by a lake. And then you can see that's kind of like this line straight down to Mesa Verde. All these things keep happening in this little strip of land. So now mm. this guy, the day after Ian O'Brien's body was found, 
uh, west of Purgatory Resort, kind of like, I don't know, somewhere, yeah, by Sig Creek Campground, somewhere around here. So this guy, um, he went for like a 90-minute hike with his wife, and they were about 20 minutes from their vehicle, and he said, hey, I want to go check out this one spot. Um, why don't you, you know, go back to the car? You know, we've been walking for a while. They're 79, you know, so he's like, you know, I just want to check it out. He had his phone, he had a radio, and she was like, okay. So she went back to the car, 20 minutes go by, and he radios her. He's like, all right, I'm heading back. Like, that was really, that was, that was great. Um, I'll see you, I'll see you soon. 20 minutes go by, 40 minutes go by, an hour and a half goes by. He doesn't show up. He calls the sheriff. The sheriff comes and brings a few people, and they do, like, preliminary sh- search because it's, at this point, late in the afternoon. It's getting dark. Uh, the next day they bring uh, three different dog teams and they pick up his scent disappears they you know after just a little bit into nothing they can't can't find him they they hundred they get a hundred volunteers over a 10-day period absolutely nothing they can't find this guy i mean he had a radio he had a phone um dog teams like just disappeared and they had uh, over 100 people. They had helicopters. Uh, it was wow. it was a crazy, crazy search. And then September 14th, they changed it from um, a, a search to a recovery, basically saying that they think that he uh, died, but they don't know because he's just gone. Uh, so there's something going on in this mountain range right here. This whole this whole area uh, up north of Durango in uh, southwest Colorado and and. It's just crazy that I was here, and I didn't. I didn't mean to pick this. I just. It just happened. That's and it, so it, there's a. <laughs> uh, there's so many missing four one ones. The more you look, it's yeah. like holy cow. There's so many stories, and I just happened to pick the one that was, in this zone that like I've been to. So it's crazy. So that was. Uh, yeah, there you go. The uh, the Durango missing four one one. And we got another one. In Colorado as well. That's the one I'm gonna do. Yeah, first. there's 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 even more actually further. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of there's a, na- uh, national park area because it's it's large. There's a lot of space. Uh, it's not well policed. That, that's one of the commonalities too. Is there there doesn't seem to be a lot of great documentation between the different precincts of police and the rangers and the FBI when they get the FBI involved. There's like not a lot of tracking on a lot of these things. They kind of just no, fall the somewhere in this void. Yeah. That's what started this, right? The bureaucracy of yeah. the forest rangers, the national forest rangers who are an entity on themselves when Garrett was talking about like how, what got what got David Politi's in this and he goes extensively in uh multiple interviews on podcasts and into his books about how weird it is. And I think Part of it is just bureaucracy, like pure federal bureaucracy, incompetence. And then there's something a little more nefarious. You could think of that mm-hmm. what you will. But the forestry, the, the, the Department of Forestry was not keeping track of missing persons on their land. Yeah. I repeat, they were not keeping track publicly of missing persons. David Polides tried to get... Uh, freedom of information requests they were they were blocking them they said to one point uh you have to be writing a book and it has to be a certain kind of book to even be considered for possibly getting some freedom of information which is uh, weird uh and he explains it better than i could uh and it's weird it now could it be just a they they're covering their ass certainly absolutely uh something else who knows uh but, you know, and, and he makes a good point to like, hey, the forestry officers are pretty good people. They're, for the most part, they're pretty good people. It's it's the higher ups and the, the decision makers and the bureaucrats. Uh, and I think we can all agree on that. Um, but yeah, and, and what we've seen from our government lately, considering the FBI, I'll just point that out. Chat's pointing it out. And I would, I would point it out too that uh, I wouldn't trust them. I wouldn't trust any organization right now. I think uh, trust in our... And our institutions is in an all-time low, and it's well earned. So I think that get, that gets even weirder, considering like we're talking about kids, missing kids, 
We're talking about missing moms uh, and families not getting closure, not getting any kind of answer whatsoever. And some of these, you know, even the stuff he covers, I'm guessing a majority of it is explainable at some point. But there are some really, it's the same with UFO. A, There's that little bit. Yeah, that's just like, that's what weird. is this? Yeah. That's really effing One in weird. Movie, in this movie, the UFO connection, right? The that one, well, that was three people yeah. missing in a triangle area, right? That was the last documentary. We, we There's tons of documentaries. There's hunting. That was the hunting one. No, there's the UFO one. And there's the hunting one. I know there's three. Off top. I might be wrong. There might be more. But there's three. Full, the missing hunting full. one, didn't we? Yeah, we did the hunting one. We did a little bit of the UFO one because the UFO one was David Politi's finally getting to what he thinks it is because for years i've he's, been listening he, to the guy just said like since these are the common 14 15 he would just say here is the case yeah. and wouldn't give any speculation on what it is mm. and then you know we we know he was a former bigfoot researcher but he was purposefully trying to separate himself from that because i think he was noticing like there's no like even if i believe in bigfoot i'm not there's no way this is all could be bigfoot this is these are strange. These are very strange. And I don't want to, you know, he wanted to bring enough attention to it, you know, just based on missing people, whatever the answer is. Uh, so he didn't want to put the stigma of Bigfoot on it. So I get why he did that. But then he started getting into other areas, which is good. You know, he eventually needed to. Uh, it doesn't, you know, whatever his theories are, it doesn't make these people show up. They're still missing. Yeah, these are yeah. legit people missing, and some of them have been explained. There was that, uh, I believe it was Arizona or New Mexico, one of the two, where a special needs woman disappeared, never came back. They did find her body like eight, nine years later, yeah. but it was a place it was searched. It was a place mm. that was already searched. A poor thing, okay. you know. You just think about that, how horrible that would be. Um, and the parents and stuff. Then you get suspicious of the parents, and you don't want to do that yeah. because they went through a tragedy. But you know, like, dude people are evil you know evil exists evil exists in this world i'm not saying that her parents were and they're, they're probably broken up it's horrible you know um and yeah that's why like uh ever since reading this stuff m my kid will never go on alone on a hike i don't care if he's 50. <laughs> i don't care no if he's, he's not going alone on a hike uh and then you know david polites also says pack he's this guys usually who are who got guns don't get taken Ladies, ladies and guys. Well, ladies should be packing all the time. Yeah, they should be. All the time. They have my knife always. Yep. All the fucking time. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's bizarre. It's it's truly bizarre. I thought a good subject for this month. Uh, Garrett, what do you got, man? All right. So mine's a little different. I, I chose this one because it's not in a national park. Uh, it's a story about Brandon Swanson. He's a young college age uh student in somewhere in the midwest minnesota i think it's minnesota technical college let me go to let me go to the page yeah yeah minnesota uh technical college uh west community and he it's at the end of his year his school year's ending they're having a party uh he leaves this party now at the at the party there was witnesses. They said he drank a couple of beers, but didn't act like he was overly drunk. Uh, wasn't stumbling around or slurring his words. He just had like a couple of beers at this at this get together and then left. And I don't even think they don't describe it as a party. They've they've only described it really as as a get together. So it may not even be a, a huge party. So he leaves his party, and he leaves. It's can be. Is the is the sound is the the town that he's leaving and he's going towards uh, Marshall. And this is kind of a a rural area. It's not a it's not a suburb. It's not a, a, a city. It's kind of out out in the in the country a little bit. So he's driving down this this highway, uh, sixty eight, something that he's driven countless times before. He's he knows this place. But for some reason, he goes through the back ways. He goes through like the country, the country roads. And at some point, he drives into a culvert. So possibly a little inebriated. A culvert? Yeah, um, culvert, like a, a ditch. 
on the side of the road. Oh, okay, okay. So he drives into this, calls his parents, and he says, hey, mom and dad, I'm on my way to Lind, and uh, I, I ran my car into the side of the road. Uh, could you come pick me up? And they go, okay, let me know where you are. And they go, oh, I'm, I'm outside of Lynn. And I could I can see it from where I am. And they go, okay. So they go there. They go to the location that he says that he is, and he's not there. And they're on the phone this whole time. And he's he's like, yeah, I'm right here. I can see the I can see the city, the city lights. Um, and they're like, well, you're not in this area. I don't know where you are. So they're having the conversation. They're talking. He's like, okay, well, I'll just. I'll just walk there. It's across this field and there's some trees and I'll, I'll just make it there. And the dad's like, okay, well let, I'll meet you there and meet me at this bar. And they're on the phone this whole time while he's walking and he's walking and his dad's getting, you know, he's getting his stuff ready and he's about to leave. And while he's talking, he's like, I've, there's running water over there. I can hear like there's a Creek. I'm getting closer to the, to the town and then between that and the town he goes oh shit and then he's silent on the phone the phone didn't hang up he just said oh shit and then the line was dead went dead it was quiet and they're trying to like hey brandon 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 are you there are you there never says anything so eventually they go okay well maybe he just disconnected there was some weird cellular issue so they call him back and he doesn't pick up and it just rings, rings, goes to voicemail and they call over and over and over. And then eventually just goes straight to voicemail and doesn't ring. So then they go to the police and they say, Hey, my son, he's, he was going from this place to another place. We don't know where his car is. We don't know where he is. Uh, and they wouldn't investigate it because he technically had the right to be missing because he's an adult and he's, he can be he can be missing if he wants to be was basically there they have to wait 24 hours before they can investigate a missing person so then they they're out there they're searching for him they wait the next day the police get involved they eventually find his car but his car is not where obviously he said he was his car was in a town next like 16 miles away from where he thought he was. And there was no buildings close that would have lights on. There were no farms. There was no, I mean, there were farms, but there, they weren't like a city. He thought he saw us like the city lights. He's like, there's Lynn, there's a city lights. Right. So they take their searching, they they get a whole. It was in a ditch, uh, though. The car did they find the it car? The, they did find the car. It was he, in the ditch. It was in the ditch. So it was basically yeah. where he, like what he ex- described, did happen. He was, he drove off the off a road, and uh, then started walking. So they got the dogs out, started following him. Tracked some scent, in the opposite direction toward like there's, the where he was, and then the sit the town that was close to him he went the opposite direction so the dogs were tracking him tracked it for several miles and then went to an abandoned uh ranch there was an abandoned farmhouse and stuff but they didn't find anything there they continued down and uh hit the river the creek river that was right there and then eventually lost it because they got into the river i guess and and uh, lost the scent, but they they went and actually they put a I'm remembering it right they they put a gate on the end of the the river so and it's not it wasn't a full river it was, it was more of like a creek it's kind of in between they put a, a gate at the end so they could catch anything that went through they searched it up and down for several days and never found anything. They ran cadaver dogs eventually, which there's the two different, there's the tracking dogs and then there's actual cadaver dogs that are specifically looking for dead bodies. Like they can, they can smell scents like 15 feet below the surface of the earth and stuff. Like if you buried something, they could find it and they never found anything along that Creek. They never found anything at some of the farm places, uh, farmhouses they went to. 
Uh, they also had an issue when they were searching for him where the, and this is all rural area, a lot of the, the ranches would not let the police come onto their property and search it because they didn't want the dogs to scare the cows or their pigs or trample over some of their crops and stuff. And it wasn't just like one, because you'd think like one farmer saying, no, don't search my property. I'd be like, okay, what's going on? But it was like all of them. So it, it tends to kind of make sense that they don't want, they didn't want people to kind of run over their, their property and mess stuff up. Um, they also so probably they, didn't want people finding a dead body, whether it be accident or not. A different That's a one. lot of trouble. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there was, right. like, there was theories about maybe he, he fell asleep in the, in a field and a farmer ran over him and Ooh. plowed him up and they didn't want to say anything, but then they kind of looked back at the timeline and that part of the year, it really wouldn't have made sense for a body to be in the field and not be seen by a farmer. They would, cause the grass was, the crops were right. so low. Yeah. So it didn't make sense. So he basically just disappeared in a, in a city next to a city that he should have been able to drive to. Like this is an area that he lives. These are streets that he knows, even the back roads. He knows these roads very well. And he just, completely lost his way possibly inebriated that could be the explanation but they never found his body ever and to this day th this happened in 2008 and to this day he still has not been found um they still what was his name uh, again uh brandon swanson so eventually the the police stopped looking for him they even had uh this is like one of the largest searches in american history was how they explained it uh, there was another uh, a father that lost his son years before that made made a uh, like a foundation and he used that foundation to come in and start searching for Brandon and they brought them in and nothing nowhere Wait, this? this was 2008 okay so for several years after that they were intensively looking up and down this this river trying to find evidence of a body or anything or a phone they never found the phone um they never found clothing they never found anything he just like oh shit disappeared and they lost him i wonder between the car and the river alleged area of the well where they found the car to the river how long it would have taken for them to walk that well actually here is if you scroll down on this there is a map Oh, can be Marshall and Lynn. Those are the two the cities. So it was found in Marshall, you said, right? That's Minnesota. Marshall. Minnesota. Minnesota. Where was the car found again? It was found. Let's see. I'm trying to find the city it was next to. He believed he was in land, but he was... He must have been looking at Marshall, right? So, in Marshall, yeah. Because that is a much bigger town than Lynn, which is tiny. I'm yeah. looking at it right now. Tiny town. That's insane. But I've got, uh, I've got some Google Maps. But if you look at this one... Google Maps, man. Google Maps. There's Marshall... And Lynn. so all of these farms that there's roads going around all these. So yeah. Lind is tiny. So he thought he was looking at Lind and he was on a road, right right here, 20, 23, mm -hmm. looking this way. And he, and he walked, walked across one of, these, one of these fields and he ended up walking. Oh, shit. He yeah. walked the opposite direction. Oh, where is the wall? Oh, I see it. The water. Weird. Uh, yeah, that's weird. Going Why to that cemetery. Yeah. It's just one of those one of those cases of missing people that even if he was what's this? intoxicated, he shouldn't have completely like lost no his logic. Way. Yeah, like cuz you would go towards lights, right? You know, you're like, "Oh my yeah, gosh, but he, I need he help." He might have thought like uh, I'm just throwing it out there. He might, you know, like if you're driving around, especially West Texas, uh, there's there's lights that look like they're effing city, and it's just oil that's, rigs. That's true. Yeah, just uh, run up on one person's. But it looks house. like a city. Yeah, 
Uh, and there. maybe he was looking at uh, this, whatever this is, you know, like a big old farm. A little farm. Something, something going on there. Kind of a cool note. His family actually petitioned the state to enact a new law that requires the police to investigate missing persons in the first 24 hours. They call it Brandon's Law. And other states around that state also enacted that. So they, if somebody goes missing and you report it, then they do actually have to investigate it. But even dude, if it's somebody that's free even to if you're walking lost. across this this is flat yeah it, it doesn't make sense that they, they would get lost because there's just nothing to get lost it's an open yeah. field where would you yeah. where would the body go i, I like that law because i mean the first 24 hours is the most crucial and right. just the percentage of finding them decreases significantly well, yep right i mean like There's even the first went, hour oh shit after yeah, especially like, dang, especially that accident mm -hmm. yeah es especially that yeah come on so there's uh. some things about about brandon not to tarnish his memory but he had had a dui three years prior when he was still a minor and that's why people people are assuming that's why he went and took these back roads because he was trying to avoid the main road he, he thought the assumption is is i had a couple of drinks if i end up in a ditch any number yeah and then i land in a ditch i'm not going to go towards the city uh that's some hypothesis Still, okay there. say he walks out and, and uh, he's so inebriated he passes out and chokes on his own puke like john bonham or something like that you're gonna find a body you're gonna find a body you're gonna find a body True uh and uh or, or evidence of one like if, if evidence, say yeah. coyotes or something came and took it somewhere else you would have some evidence in do the dog the tracking dogs would what be are the pre it. what's the predator situation up in uh rural minnesota they're i'd wolves. assume there'd be bobcats or yeah, wolves um, or whatever um, uh coyotes cougars bears cougars yeah wolves bobcats lynx a lot, a, lot of of a lot of cats. Foxes, although I don't see a fox attacking a human, though. Not a grown one. No, but if it's dead body, birds will eat it. So that's true. true. It's a very weird, weird case. It's a weird case, and especially with the oh shit. Yeah. yeah. So he's walking. He's he hears the creek. So he's definitely somewhere well, he's along that creek side. The lights that he saw, right? He said he Where's saw the lights light. that he saw? And but said, uh, obviously, out. even if he's drunk, you can tell there's if there's lights in front of you, yeah. and you walk mm -hmm. towards them, assuming that it's coming yeah. from some sort even, of building. Even and they said in the town of Lynn uh, or the town of Marshall, there is uh, uh, a silo that has a light on the top, and they thought possibly that was it. But the direction that the dogs tracked was in the opposite direction, away from the town. So I don't know. maybe they maybe a Big cat got him and drug him into the river, and they never found his body ever, which is very strange. Creepy. Cats don't. You don't. It, that's not uh, in the middle do. of a in the middle of a field. Yeah, it's very strange. I feel like they would be fine with just having their way in the middle of the field and then going when they're done. Dragging him to a river. Must yeah, I thought that one was interesting because it wasn't. It didn't fit the pattern of the same of the national parks. It was no, but there's near rural water. area, but it, it was, was near water. water. It was near water. Mm -hmm. What's his last name? Was, What's his last name? He was handicapped. Um, Swanson. Swanson. He did have a handicap. Amp he was night. blind in one eye. He was okay, blind <gasps> in one eye. So that does Ooh. match up. He was to blind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. one eye. Oh, you know what? That reminds me. Um, Should have been driving. Brian makes it a little harder to drive, especially when you're drunk. Yeah, uh, had. Uh, issues with his sight as well i think he had epilepsy oh yeah one of the guys yeah dang uh there's that one case of that kid who went you know that's in the movie the kid who went off fishing right from the church oh, yeah group, the, the yeah. deaf kid and uh they never found him again and he was just like within shouting distance of right. somebody when he went missing which is Jesus really bizarre dang. Really bizarre. What do you got, X-ray girl? Uh, I have a story about a, a kid, 17-year-old, named Corey Fay. Uh, disappeared in November 23rd, 1991. In, uh, where was it again? Uh, in the Thai Valley in Oregon near a place called, um, oh, 
I have a map of it here. I'll just show you. Badger Creek Wilderness. There we go. So right there. Like zoom in. So he goes hunting with his dad's friend and the uh, friend's son, uh, elk hunting. And he is a pretty experienced hunter. Um, he's also trained in outdoor survival technique. He had a backpack with a compass, emergency blanket, food. Oh, and what else? Uh, his rifle and ammunition. Um, so they decided to leave around like 630 in the morning and split up and meet up in about an hour at the car. And uh, of course, the father's friend was there within the hour as well as the son. And then Corey didn't show up at all. So of course he gets reported missing search and rescue with um, a big search party, helicopters, horses, hiking, hikers, dogs. They didn't find a single trace, not a, a scent of him. And they stopped shortly after, I believe uh, seven days. And what was weird was F FBI got involved by, uh, according to the sheriff's office, which FBI, as we know, don't usually get involved in disappearances unless, of course, maybe suspect is foul play. But I actually um, read something where another disappearance happened and FBI got involved with no, um, no one prompted them. So they just showed know. up. They just showed up. So That's not weird. That, yeah, but anyway, so it wasn't like that with this one, but um, in any case, in September that next year, his backpack and rifle was found within 10 miles of where the group went hunting, and then his jacket was found about a mile away from the backpack. Now, what's interesting with this is where those items were found, they... At that time, the snow was about waist deep. And now the only reason they know it was waist deep is during the search and rescue, helicopters thought they saw tracks in the snow and they went to check. Of course, there was nothing. It was animal tracks. And um, they noted that it was waist deep in terms of like trekking through that area, uh, which makes wow. no sense because he would not have gone in an area like that. And plus it was uphill from where they had left for the day to go elk hunting. So uh, if someone who's well-trained in survival would go find a river and walk down that river and it'll, eventually you'll find some sort of civilization. And um, they found his jacket somewhere also? Yes. So he didn't have a jacket on. Nope, which is very odd as well. And so nothing else was found um, in terms of clothes, but about a quarter mile from where the backpack was found, uh, they found a small bone fragment and one tooth. Mm. No long bones, no big bones, nothing. That was it. Was it his? Yeah, did they, they track it too? Did they? 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 they um, I think they checked dental records for that, but um, that to me is insane. Insane. like <sighs> so it where, was his it was his his tooth and apparently and so the family believes that he died of hypothermia and then got eaten which is wild i just i have never heard of that before Did and it say I, he I, was he was pretty aware oh, of was, this area he knows this area pretty well or um it didn't say a hundred percent if he knew the area very well but i think if you are a trained outdoorsman you would take the necessary precautions to not and get, get too to know far. that area right I, exactly I it, like i don't know if i don't know an area i'm not going to go too far away from like the road you know or from the car and i mean within an hour to come back to the car it's half an hour one way half hour back right yeah one tooth one tooth one one tooth and a fragment of a bone. I had to like double check too, because when I was looking through all that stuff, I said his remains, and I'm like, what remains? And that was yeah, the one remains tooth. they were talking about. Yeah. Jeez. I guess, yeah. Well, like, what you can, can do just... that to a human body? I mean, I don't know. Your long what? bone's gone? How long, right, how, right. how long after? A year. A year. Okay. I mean, I guess you could, depending There's on the, the wildlife, they could take, right? yeah, it could be scavenged Where's away. 
Grizzly bear will crunch you up. I right? guess. Or just use it birds as a toothpick. And then wolves or coyotes come around and. But even if the away. dogs should have, um, should have been able to detect that. that, right? Yeah, true. Oh, uh, although someone did say bears will crunch bones for marrow. That makes. But sense. one tooth. Yeah, but yeah, right. Where's the rest of the teeth? In his belly. Maybe Around? I don't know. I've never for, known for, any for, animal to like eat. It's a very little amount. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what but, part of the bone was that piece? Not that it really mattered. They they never said no. specifically in anything that I have uh, I have searched, Ooh. and I mean, if it's a very small bone fragment, can you one hundred percent tell what it is? Well, you're an x-ray girl i feel like you'd be able maybe to. depends on how good depends you are where? if they would have gotten bones on it from the tv show oh my god she would have known <laughs> she would have known immediately first sight <laughs> it's, it's the theme of that, show. that was a fun show back in the it was a great I show i loved yeah. when mrs neurotic would always play it during dinner time and there'd be some open rib, ca rib cage with like body parts <laughs> fine i'm like great hey. Awesome. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, it's but... just all part of the natural body. It, it just, this one was weird to me because, like, especially because I did watch the documentary a bit with the hunted, um, the missing 401 hunted, and they look at a bunch of very skilled hunters or outdoorsy types, people who know what to do when you're in trouble. Right. And it just makes you second guess. Like, I'm not like at that level, but if I were to go out now, I'd, probably be a lot more careful than i have before oh yeah maybe bring more than a knife uh i mean when i went hiking proper i would have you know emergency blanket uh warmers extra jackets and a raincoat and i don't know There's food right. water filter stuff like that so i imagine even for somebody that's really skilled and you no know, they could still get lost no, of like, course. Like, it's still a possibility for them to get lost. I mean, it's just way lower. That I think that's what's so strange about yeah, it. Is that we do see a lot of these, <clears throat> these people that are experienced getting lost. And well, we're picking but... stuff that David Pauletti's has picked that kind of discounts certain aspects like animals. And uh, mm -hmm. and uh, he's he's gone through that. Cause, uh, I, was, I was also going to mention they actually did not see any elk. In a well-known elk area. Hmm. Weird. Zorbu mm -hmm. came out. Well, remember that one hunter the from the UFO one who like I had the damn elk in my sight. There's no way I could have missed it, and I missed it. And then there was talk of a there's there's talks of uh, the hunter seeing the um the clear box. Remember, in the middle of the guy who saw, had the UFO sighting was just it was like a a glass square. I no? think, you never heard I that one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I haven't heard no. that one. Oh, you need to watch. Well, you need to watch the documentaries. Well, maybe all we'll available. Watch it I haven't seen that one. It's on, it's on Prime. Um, they're on Prime. I believe. Yeah, they're, they're all on oh. Prime. I've not, watched them all. It's not free, but it's they're behind paywalls. They're not so. free. You can rent no. them. You can rent them. You can give these people sure. money. Or not. I mean, do whatever you want. That's but wild. um, uh, Some of them are free. Like, after a while, they, they, they're free on, like, YouTube. That's I think true. one of the missing 411... The first yeah. one, the first, 20... one. The first four one 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 is yeah. uh, is on is free on YouTube. Go, and yeah, then there's one kids old. Uh, there's old uh, coast to coast with him, uh, and he's talked to a bunch of people. Like it's uh, he's all over the podcast, and he like is a really good guest because he just goes, man. He just goes. One of those. Hey, David, if you'd like to come on yeah. for part hey. three, Mr. Polite. Uh huh. Hi. You could tell us how to pronounce your last name. And you get major, I mean, <laughs> not, it, it's, okay, if you don't look at the guy, you get major ex-cop vibes, and then you see him, he's got, like, ex-cop mustache, like the, oh, yeah, yeah, the totally one does. that they're required to have. <laughs> so. Hey, for the audience who doesn't know. Oh, you getting uh, it? I was going to get it. <laughs> oh, I mean, this it? is yeah. just Google images. If you just look at this guy, you're going to go, ex-cop. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Look at the top at, left. It goes from Steven Seagal, yeah, then one down to Tom Selleck, 
<laughs> just oh yeah yeah right you see it yeah oh my yeah. gosh that's yeah. stash that's a stash right there yeah so uh, it, he, he there's a lot of like really great creepy i mean if you want to get i mean believe it or not like you want to get like legit i don't get creeped out by much but man i i used to hike a lot and camp a lot mm -hmm. and be kind of a an outdoor dude when i was up in cal when i was in california i really liked the desert i loved yosemite you know i i, mm -hmm. I hiked up mountain like i hiked up mount lenton mount lemon mount san jacinto uh i did all that shit. um and uh, it was tons of fun never thought about this stuff at all i you know i never packed a gun because i couldn't had a knife or whatever and sometimes i went up with like very little or no water because i was just young and dumb and i'm like i can do this i'll find water somewhere you know let's just oh go my God. water's heavy it's water's very heavy, heavy. <laughs> it's freaking stupid as hell well in mount san jacinto it could be 100 degrees on the floor of the desert and by the time you're done you're going to get rained on twice, possibly, depends on, depending on, this is uh, the mount, uh, it's near, uh, it's over Palm Springs. And you get up top and there's snow. There's snow. It's, it's oh, yeah. bizarre. That, so That's what I used to, that's what I did when I went to Europe. The, it was like hot, hot down at the bottom and it was snowing. Heavy. This much snow at the top. Uh, it's sterile and I like the taste. <laughs> it's Get a life stick. Life sticks are crazy, man. You can I drink mean, out of anything. If you need to. Also, if you're cold, you should pee because you use body energy to keep the pee warm. Just well, a, one of the weird things about hypothermia, they said, is you take your shoes off because your feet feel hot or some shit. Paradoxal like that. undressing. That's what they call it. Really? Yeah, because you feel your body is trying to what? heat itself, so you, you feel like you're overheating, so then you take your clothes off. I thought that we was stripping that. when you're drunk. That's also related. Okay. okay. That's oh. one of the commonalities, <laughs> actually. That's why this guy, Extra Girl, was, was saying, took his jacket off. Like mm -hmm. Possibly, he yeah. Yeah, possibly. He, he got he confused and yeah. hypothermic. and Or... Uh, what the weirder cases you're finding like there's a lot of cases of people climbing up like why in the hell if you're you're lost why would you climb up maybe a little ways to to kind of get an idea of you know where you right. are but then but there's the they even kids found that with the kid yeah the, the, like the the five six year old kids who climb up mountains they have no business yeah. climbing up there's no way they could uh and it's it's freaking bizarre. I've got one. I've got one. I almost uh, sneezed, but I didn't. Go ahead and sneeze. I was going to say, a, it was the aliens. They dropped them off where it was easier for them. Well, it, it's really bizarre. The bodies they do find, it's areas that they've checked before. There is also the very strange uh, commonality of there's a lot of people of German heritage. Yeah, I saw that one, too. That's... That's that weird. one's weird. Near water, um, but oh, I, I'm of oh, German oh, heritage. I better not go in the woods. I am too. <laughs> so. I think most of us are at this point, except me, probably. Uh, the unexplained disappearance and death of Mitchell Dale Stelling in Mesa Verde National Park, Adam, Colorado. This Colorado, the same one. This is it? It's the same spot. Yeah. This is the Mesa. This is the. Cliff oh, that's palette. why it Where sounded so familiar. Oh, my God. <laughs> cool. Give it to me. I didn't hear this one. Oh, you didn't? Okay. Well, I'll share it. There's an there's an article. Somebody made oh, a video on it that just this read this article. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, well, I mean, I can listen to it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and do, 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 do. Okay. Okay. So uh, Mitchell Dale Stelling disappeared June 9th, 2013 in Mesa Verde National Park, Colorado remains found seven years later, seven years later, but it gets, there's a weird, there's some weirdness about this. Uh, we'll get to that uh, top part for it. So That's this is, it. this is what it's ma famous for. And I guess you can go by some of these places, but you're strictly not supposed to go to other places. Like a lot of this, a lot of this is blocked off now. Oh, it's all uh, we, will, we will definitely go check these places out, though. Ooh. We're definitely going to go to places like that. Looks fucking awesome. Look at that. 
that's that's, clip, that's uh that was really cool that's, that's where i was at i walked through all that is that built up like stone or mud yeah, or is like, that it's carved brick, out sandstone i actually have a a, a whole thing about it right in front sandstone of me. brick okay. uh so the mesa verde cliff palace is the largest and most famous cliff dwelling at mesa verde it has over 150 rooms and more than 20 kivas which are essentially like uh it's like the four seasons of the native americans they're they're like circular domes made out of wood and sandstone and mortar all right and and you can Mm -hmm. have a fire pit in it and so it's where they cooked and like had the family uh meals and everything uh the dwelling is crafted from sandstone wooden beams and mortar and has been remarkably well preserved from the elements for the past 700 years as you can see it's completely tucked under these cliffs uh they're freaking cool so yeah um that's 700 insane. years old. That about this so uh i could have i i couldn't find any pictures i have a shit ton of pictures because i S- went through here stelling was going to go to the spruce uh spruce tree ruin uh house ruin which is right here which apparently was a quarter of a mile from where he was and you think a quarter of a mile is like nothing it is nothing. Uh, didn't take any water. It was a hot day, but he was an experienced outdoorsman. That's probably like the walk from the parking lot to the trailhead. <laughs> Pretty you much. Know, like quarter of a mile, yeah. That's, yeah, that's like a walk from my house to the end, to, to where the street ends and intersects with another street. It's yeah. nothing, Yeah. Uh, background on Stelling disappearance. The Stellings left their home town of Goliad in Texas in a camper trailer, and drove west. As Dale had always wanted to see Colorado, he was an outdoorsman and had keen uh, and a keen camper. A man who could spend hours tending to his garden. He knew exactly how to spend that downtime. A day trip to Mesa Verde National Park. Originally, the Stellings only planned to drive out to the lookout point and take in the scene, or, uh, take it a scene from a distance, since the trail was rugged, and since uh, Deneen was overweight and Dale's parents were elderly, it would have not been possible for them to easily hike it. But being the rugged outdoorsman, Dale Stelling had to get a little closer. Now, what's rugged? Now, rugged to me is you. They say there's a trail there, and you don't see the trail. You're like, where's the fucking trail? Yeah. What trail? I see a bunch of rocks. At 4:08 p.m., it was hot. Temperatures in the park were in the 90 to 100 degrees range. If he's from Texas, that's cool. Uh, and the terrain consisted of steep canyons and mesa tops at an elevation of 6,500 to 8,000 feet. The hike on the top of the trailhead should have taken around an hour. Uh, about Mesa Verde National Park. Mesa Verde, Spanish for Green Table National Park is in, yes, and that's that's what it means, Green Table. There's so many things in Southern California that are named like that, like Vista, which means view, or Buena Vista, which means good view. Uh, national Park is an American National Park of Ancesco World Heritage Site located in Montezuma County, Colorado. The park protects some of the best preserved ancestral Pueblin archaeological sites in the United States Mesa Verde. I'm thinking about like Verde sauce right now, hot sauce. It's terrible. Uh, was the first national park of its kind, and it was established in 1906 by President Theodore Roosevelt the, uh, to protect the legacy of the Pebloans who lived in the area for over 700 years. That's not the only reason he did it, but uh, whatever. True. <laughs> Stick with your with your history. Uh, the park occupies 52,485 acres, uh, 21,204 HAs. What the hell? What's that? Hectares? Hectares? I don't need to know that shit. Why would they make it in hectares? Why? Is it hectares? Near the Four Corners region of the American Southwest, with more than 5,000 sites, including 600 cliff, 600 cliff dwellings, for sure. That's awesome. Uh, it is the largest archaeological preserve in the United States. The park is best known for the structures such as Cliff Palace, thought to be the largest cliff dwelling in North America. Starting uh, circa 7500 BC, Mesa Verde was seasonally inhabited by a group of nomadic Paleo Indians known as the Foothill Mountain Complex. Later, uh, archaic people established semi permanent rock shelters 
in and around the Mesa by 10,000 BC, 1000 BC, sorry. Uh, the basket master culture, the basket maker, master, whatever. You could be a basket master. Why not? They probably, uh, culture I'm emerged. The basket master. I'm the basket master, bitches. Uh, emerged from the local archaic population by 750 AD and the ancestral Pueblins. Puebloans. Fuck, that gets getting harder to say. Pueblins? I think you had it right. I'm sure. Pueblos? Uh Had yep. developed from the basket master culture, uh, the basket master race, uh, by the end of the 12th century. Ew. They began to construct the massive cliff dwellings for which the park is best known by 1285, following a period of social and environmental instability driven by a series of severe and prolonged droughts. They abandoned the area and moved south to the location in Arizona and New Mexico, or they were attacked by red-haired giants or Bigfoot. Wow. There's no proof that it didn't happen, including uh, Rio Chama, uh, pa ooh. Pajarito Plateau and Santa Fe. So now we know everything about the site. That's, that's a setup. It's a setup. <laughs> that's a big setup. On that day, he disappeared. His family quickly reported him missing. At first, Rangers thought he had gotten off track and they told his wife to give it a couple more hours. The park never had a person go missing for more than a couple of hours. Said uh, Betty Lawrence, uh, Park Public Information Officer, PR officer. When he had not returned two hours after he uh, two, af two hours after he started on the Spruce Tree House hike, an intensive two week an intensive two week intensive search began. So it's super intensive uh, began that at its peak included sixty searchers, two dog teams, helicopter surveillance, and rope teams that rappelled off cliffs in the Chapin Mesa area. The canine team initially showed interest in the area. In the first days of the search, uh, the Petroglyph Point Trail follows a cliff base uh, before ascending into a mesa via a series of steps, switchback sections with steps uh, cut into rock. Okay. It's not so bad. The day he disappeared was very hot and he didn't have any water with him, but he did have a cellular phone. No one was able to get any response or pings from it after his disappearance. Crucially, phone records showed that he tried to access his voicemail about 7 p.m. that night, but nothing after that. That is weird. Creepy. Uh-huh. He is wearing a khaki Mesa Verde Museum Association baseball cap, brown t-shirt, tan khaki shorts. Not the best stuff to go hiking in, by the way, people. It's like camouflage. Uh, calf height, white socks, and red wing Oxford walking boots. He also carried his wallet and some smokes. He had a pack of smokes. According to Patrick O'Donnell of the Park Services, Media Services, Intermountain Region, other than the main trails, the majority of Mesa Verde is uncharted territory that is off limits to hikers. So don't be effing around. But they uh, that happens, but... Yeah, I have to look at this place. You've been there, Adam. Is it easy to get yeah. lost? Is it pretty messed up? Oh man, the when they were saying the canyons, like there was uh, actually I had the map up in front of me there. So across the way, when you're at the uh, Cliff Palace, you kind of have to go down into this canyon because mm -hmm. it's under that cliff, right? It's under that you see that big cliff overhang, but it, what it doesn't show you is. It's taking those photos from the other side of the of the valley, right? Yeah. It goes further down into the canyon. Like if you were to walk away from the cliff uh, house or cliff palace, you would fall down in the canyon. It goes much further down. Hope and then nobody across, was sleepwalking. Well, across the canyon, you could see other, like other smaller cliff dwellings that weren't as grand as the cliff palace. So I could imagine the spruce tree house. He's trying to make his way down there. They're they're underneath these huge cliffs, so to get to them, you have to go, you know, through these spots. And I remember the Cliff Palace is the one that is mostly that most tourists want to go to this place. And they even say this is a challenging uh, path to get down here, and it it was. And I, I I passed so many people because they were, you know, you had to like 
scale some stuff. It wasn't yeah. like a simple like wind down the dirt path, you know, and then you know it's, then you're there. No, it's like yeah. I'm over this boulder, and then like find your way around this freaking massive. Uh, well, there's a lot of boulders. There's a lot of rocks, but it was other boulders. while you're while you're going down in elevation to get underneath those cliffs. So it was it was not easy. It was fun for me, but you know I was, you know mid 30s like a good shape like it was fine for me but i i can imagine you know being by yourself going down into these places yeah it's uh i i didn't see because cliff palace is is looks like it's about i don't know half a mile away in a different couple different canyons over the spruce tree house which is where he was lost in uh, but i can imagine it's the quarter same quarter of a mile though and uh, they did say that there's certain cracks and crevices that if he fell into, you had to be like, you would have to be looking straight down. But that wasn't the case here. That wasn't the case. Mm. Um, and remember, this was a quarter mile hike. <clears throat> he uh, tried to ac access his uh, voicemail at 7 p.m. That was pretty much it. Uh, they gave up, according to his uh, wife or girlfriend, can't remember. Um, she said that they pretty much gave up an intensive search after two days and they did just base a basic search, which was if you're, if there's a park ranger in the area, keep your eyes out. Um, they said up to 10 people go missing, uh, every yearly in the park. Now, I don't know if, th does that mean they're lost forever or people just go missing and they find them? I don't, if 10 yeah, people go missing too. in a park, Probably yearly, I would, uh, that's a twice. lot. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, like, what is the recovery rate on those five to ten people? Yeah. What do you? What's missing? Notice they didn't put that info in there. They don't. Uh, they uh, they had again a lot of people searching for him. Not found. They kept the case open though. It did haunt some of the people that worked there. They were constantly thinking about it. Um. There was a hiker who had the, uh, come across him while he was on the hike. Uh, so they, they talked to some of those people and there was also a couple of hyper hikers who distinctly heard a man asking for help, heard a voice asking for help. But one of the hikers, instead of going to help him was a woman and said, Hey, instead of me becoming the second victim, I'm going to go back down and tell the ranger. Now that second person who heard the man asking for help was the ranger, <laughs> but they never could find him. Uh, so they're just so hearing his voice. From they're hearing a man's voice. Off. Yeah, bouncing off. Sounds and like he fell down into the canyon somewhere. Maybe, yeah. but uh, long story short, short, 2020 they found him, and he was miles away after oh, seven years without what? a trace being found park law enforcement rangers with assistance from isb and montezuma county coroner's office finally found human re remains at the national park on seven september 17 2020 this is based on a tip an anonymous tip uh -huh. mesa That's verde cool. national park superintendent cliff spencer said an anonymous tip the day before indicated the remains of Dale Steller were in a remote section of the park west of Durango. The tip did not provide an exact location, but descriptions in the tip gave search crews a good idea of where it was. Spencer said the body was found quite a distance away from where Stelling was last seen, around 4.2 miles. Uh, the area, which took search crews about two hours to search, was searched in 2013 when Stelly went missing. So who are they helping? They hearing say help. I don't know. Montezuma County okay. Coroner uh, George Deaver said he is 99% sure the remains are that of uh, Mitchell Dale Stelling because of the items found at the scene. Uh, so I guess they they found bones. That's all they found. But they found a driver's license, credit cards, and a social security card. That's pretty definitive. That had Stelling's information on it. But they don't know what killed him. They have no, there's not enough 
there, but on the bones, there is no sign of trauma. Deaver said he's going to meet with the forensic anthropologist to examine the remains, looking at any signs of trauma. Since then, there were, they have found no signs of trauma. So he didn't break anything. He didn't nope. like fall and break. And obviously he was able to move four and a half miles. If you're hurting like in that environment, that is not easy at all. At, so at the time, it might as well be 20 miles. At the time of discovery, it was unclear whether a DNA test was possible to take DNA from a bone sample. The bone must have a re retained some moisture. Many of the bones found were bleach, but it's possible there is still some moisture in them if DNA test is possible. Uh... Remains were found by a hiker in an area that was close to the public at the bottom of a canyon. He could have been washed, washed to that spot as well. How did Dan? There, how did monsoons, he get to, monsoons? Will monsoons, wash. but there wasn't a monsoon during. Well, it will. Well, seven, seven years. No, seven seven years but years will it wash life. you with your ID and everything? If it's will it wash all the clothing. bones together? Uh, that, that they can wash it out of the clothing. Those monsoons get crazy, dude. That is yeah, strong really water. Uh, like, how the hell did what a, and a freaking social security card like what is this like this that's weird that, that's some fishy shit come on this is a little weird yeah. so, and so, the anonymous come everything. on <laughs> like it's yep, orbu security guard and could they, couldn't they i don't know if they how much of the bones they found but they could like dental records it you know maybe you didn't have a skull and there is weirder cases there's the ski town one where the kid is seen like on surveillance video walking away they later found his body completely butt naked in a river uh there's the one where the kid um the kid was found that's in the documentary uh there's so many ones of the kids uh, if, if they find a body or or they find yeah. shoes uh in one case there's a folded pair of pants folded pair of pants oh i remember it's that fucking weird yeah like on top of a mountain or something yeah right? somewhere they couldn't get to something like it's that creepy. or no that's where they were found i don't remember it's been a while i want to go to these i want to see the petroglyphs i want to go yeah those are cool um be careful out there that's all i gotta say yeah national parks they're uh dangerous places but beautiful dude i used to Dude, when I was a yeah. teenager, I'd run around Yosemite by myself. I got lost there a couple times, like bad lost. Um, I, I my, my parents never found out because I found my way back when the sun came up. But, dude, I was like, fuck. Shit. I had to sleep on a rock. I was so like, I don't know what the oh hell I am. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. That's scary. Lost. Yeah. Yeah. You so, could have been one, on the, one of the people on the I list. could have been one of those people, but uh, I just crashed out on a big old boulder. <laughs> you know, it's like, what am I going to do? I'm glad you and made it out. <laughs> I am too. But I uh, yeah, I was I was a drunk 14 year old. Okay, that's, that's going to happen. But uh, yeah, man, uh, these are great cases. I highly recommend you listen to them. Uh, David Polides knows how to tell a story. Yeah. The guy's really good at telling a story. And he's man. passionate he about like it. He has really like books or really something too, right? He's written a ton of books. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll get to the super chats. Let's get to the super chats. While I still this have is like even gas these, in the tank. How many, how many stories you had, Adam? Four. Gary, you had one. I had one. X-Ray had one. Drop in the bucket. And we just talked about. Oh, barely have so not. Barely top map, right? level of them. There's so many of them. It's it is are, really interesting. We just talked about isn't even on this map. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, we should show the map. This is I think it was in like the document. Yeah, yeah. The, we the, talked about it the first the time. Clusters, talked, yeah, the clusters. The clusters. Yeah, show the clusters. The clusters. Map. All right. Cluster find where did I drop it? Oh, here we go. Research. I wish somebody would release like a good high res version because these are kind of old. Uh, missing four one one maps. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. just America. Colorado Basically. there. There's nothing all of those in the bottom in... left. That's in the bottom left, Colorado. Hey, we're safe in Texas. Hey, <laughs> yeah. 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 
Well, look yeah, at look at where Yosemite is, though. Look at your, mm. where Yosemite is. That is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I is. mean, this is just America. They're probably a ton in Canada because I mean the mountain ranges up here, and there's a lot of national parks there too. True. Who knows? Yeah, he's just doing I mean, America park. national parks. Like, right? I can only imagine. Mm-hmm. Well, he's he's spread it out now. There's clusters everywhere. It's, uh, dude, imagine Russia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear yeah. It must be nuts. Datloff Pass kind of rings to something like this. Some weird shit happening Drinker, out in the middle Drinker of nowhere. Drinker wants to come on and talk about Datloff. I would Pass. love to hear. Maybe <gasps> we should, maybe we should get him I'll, on. I'll get with him. Ping him. Okay. Ping him. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's uh, another crazy story. That is wild. Um, Bigfoot has dropped us twenty five dollars stream lab. Thank you, Bigfoot. He said, so after my donation on FNT, Gary implied I ain't real. I'm not real, huh? Really, man? Well, that's funny because, like, how the hell do you explain two donations from me? And as far as your beard goes, I got a better pelt on my left nad. Mic drop, foot out. (laughs) Foot out. Oh, my God. Foot out. Foot out. It's a lot of hair. I I do believe I have just been served. You did. Uh, Zorbu on the Streamlabs side for $25 <laughs> says, Hail <laughs> Earthlings. Hey, aliens. I love you guys. <laughs> uh, just got done wiping Quarter Black's mind about an hour ago, so he won't remember any of this. Anyway, <laughs> if he's favoring one side as he sits there, it's because, well, let's just say he won't crap right for a week. Hashtag Jumbo Probe. <laughs> <laughs> you went to the Jumbo this time, Zorbu? Jeez, man. Well, it's easier what are you now. looking for? He's kind of worked out the sphincter. So. <laughs> <laughs> what are you freaking trying to get information about? Oh, I'll just Bigfoot. tell you, just ask me. Drops 25 bucks again, Bigfoot. Question for the chat. If Gary doesn't believe in me, does that make me Sasquatch? Oh. I'll give you that. Give it to him. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Wait, was uh, that an uh, emergency meeting? What the yeah. hell? They were playing that game, Gary. It's us. What game? Oh. That would I forgot fun. the name of the game. What is the name? Uh, Among Us. With the little Among cute us, little yeah. alien. Among Us, yeah. Among Us. Yes. Yeah, yeah I remember really one. sucking at that game. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We did play it. <laughs> it was very time. fun. I, I had never played it before in my life. Hey, I'll have you know, I did some gaming this weekend. Oh. I, uh, I've i got a game room that I've been working on downstairs, and I got my PS3 and my PS2 Ooh. hooked up, and wow. I played Return of the King on PS2. For a couple of hours, oh, it was such a awesome. good game. Where's mine? It was uh, awesome. It's in there. Uh, such a good game. It's like an all timer right there. Two Towers is also very good. Very good. I streamed that. It was fucking what kind of game is it? Uh, it's a it's hack and slash. Fight. It's just a hack and slash. You start out with uh, Return of the King. Man. You're like Gandalf <laughs> at uh, Helm's Deep. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And oh. you just do, all you have to do is hit the melee and you beat the crap out of a bunch of orcs. It's great. It's so fun. It's so fun. <laughs> like, uh, and and you can play it with four players. So you get the system oh, link there. Really? Not the system link, but the multi tap. Four four controllers in there and you're like Gimli and Legolas and freaking it's so good. Yeah. It's good <laughs> good time. So yeah, I played some PS two uh yesterday. It was great. Uh, WG has gifted five Nerdrotic Live memberships for $25. Thank you. I got to save my voice. I got a video to finish. You want me to read? Uh, I can read for a little while, but I'm sure they would much rather you read than me. I mean, I'm funny because I can't read, but uh, we'll do a couple more and then you can take over. Okay. Oh, announcement. Super Chat Corp was supposed to be tonight. I moved it to tomorrow morning. It's tomorrow morning. We're still going to do it. I even have a title. I don't know what the title of the Super Chat Square Up is. Uh, Disney Marvel stands like to watch men eat pie. That's the title. Okay? Oh, my goodness. I, if you didn't, if you haven't been paying attention, because I'm sure you're all off Twitter because it's a fucking nightmare right now. That's cool. Um, I put up a clip of Mobius and Loki eating pie and just flippantly talking about the Battle of New York. Like it was just, oh, there's this, there's this thing that happened. It was like the Battle of New York. And I totally like threw Tony Stark off the building and stuff, eating Emotion, key lime pie. Right? And I just put the absolute state of Disney Marvel and dude, it dude. <laughs> triggered the Marvel stands. Now, imagine that many Marvel stands actually watching the show, which they're not True. doing. 
Loki is the Ahsoka of uh, of of Marvel. They all got tired from Ahsoka and they've moved over. But uh, yeah, that video has like five million views. Damn, <laughs> I, know, dude, I could just noticed it today. I'm like, what? Because uh... <laughs> my mentions were just filled with what's what's wrong with this scene, dude. I'm all, I don't know everything. Uh, but um, if you like it, cool. You probably really like Supergirl too. Uh, Josh Kelsey for twenty dollars just drops twenty and walks off like Josh, Josh does. Uh, Charles for nineteen ninety nine says boar will eat and crush teeth. Yes, there's a lot in Texas, so how come there isn't missing people in Texas? Oh, because we're shooting them <laughs> from like uh, ATVs and helicopters. And helicopters. <laughs> I want to do that, man. You know, uh, done it. Boar hunting. Yeah, yeah. I like shooting things. Um, it's like a fifty cal. But like, I don't like shooting living things. I, I'm all for hunting. Like. Go hunt away. We need to hunt. If you want to hunt, totally cool. I just, I don't think I'm personally into it myself, but I'll shoot a boar. Have you shot a 50 cal before? Uh, no. I'm, I I'm not. But I would like to. I totally uh, the, won't be shooting a 50 cal for my wife's collection at all. Because uh -huh. I'm not supposed to. How about you, Adam? I have. A 50 caliber sniper in the middle of a uh, Maryland forest somewhere, or maybe it was nice. Virginia. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't, I think it was, I don't think it was Tim's. I think Tim got had like a buddy of his who had it, but it was like a you had to unscrew it and like freaking open the thing up and like slide the freaking chamber. I have the, the case, Bolt action. Oh, yeah. I shot fully automatic, uh. Was it? Uh, I think I saw it in M16 that they brought there. I shot Glock automatic Glock with an extended mag. It's freaking rad. AK-47s. Those are cool. Thing freaking kicks like crazy. And, uh, yeah, it's huge. Fun. I like that Desert Eagle from Reacher, dude. Desert Remember Eagles that? are the most ridiculous gun ever. It's so fucking it. ridiculous and awesome. Remember when he shoots that cartel guy in the back and it just puts a <laughs> freaking hole in Yeah, there. That's so good. Richard Can't wait for season two, man. Uh, I haven't I seen think... season one. I got to watch oh, that. Oh, season one's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's a fun show. I hear about it. It's fun. Terminal List, really good, kind of deep and dark. Reacher's fun. Reacher's just like revenge fun. I mean, there's, you know, there's some sad scenes, but yeah. season two comes up, I think, in December. <coughs> Excuse me. A Quelmdar in three parts for $150. <laughs> okay, you better read this x-ray, girl. Uh, okay, uh, uh, so first part. Uh, 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 sorry, that was scared me. Oh, oh my God. I did. <laughs> Definitely not related to Zorbu. Quelndar is what I called the dwarves in a fantasy world I created in high school 30 years ago. It literally means underdweller, part two. Also, yes, it was the original Exorcist 50th anniversary. I got to see in theaters a couple weeks ago. Amazing experience. Must have been remastered. It used all the surround speakers and sounded great. Part three. Sorry for the off-topic messages. Just wanted to clarify those two things. Thanks for your indulgence and hail the Forbidden uh, Frontier Fellowship. The Exorcist is 50. That makes me feel extremely oh. old. Yeah. I mean, you are, so. That was a good movie. I watched it's it a couple, uh, I think last year. Good point. At least I'm not Dan Bask. <laughs> Damn. Hey. You know, he wasn't young, even involved in the conversation. Young, He's handsome. Wrecked. Fatality. <laughs> Living in a shanty. Did you see me roast him on Twitter? Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> <laughs> he's guy. like that's mean and i'm like yes, yes it is. <laughs> i gotta do it <clears throat> i gotta do something uh zorbu for 25 dollars on the Streamlabs side hail again earthlings a lot of speculation tonight regarding missing people i can't speak for bigfoot but let me assure you all it ain't us grays i joke about probes and stuff but in reality we outsource 99 percent of our probing uh, probing to call centers in india <laughs> man you're not even probing me yourself zorbu have you uh, have some dignity the, have you checked your butt plug 
<laughs> Did you try trying to turning it off yes, and then on again? And on. Are you sure you <laughs> didn't put it up there yourself, sir? <laughs> <laughs> or madam. Uh Bigfoot. Oh Jesus, for twenty five dollars on the stream website. Thanks, Bigfoot. Sorry, I deny your reality. Hi, Gary, me again. But this time I'm donating encrypted currency. <laughs> <laughs> all right some crypto all right cryptid currency get it <laughs> cryptid because i'm a crypt oh whatever it doesn't matter man <laughs> oh, i got you over right there I'm i got with you there. bigfoot cryptid currency is that's funny that is legit funny uh hayden 75 for 20 dollars. uh what's up hayden brother uh the cluster map of missing per persons highlights the area i have my property in in arkansas i remember you telling me about that the same place that I've heard the weird sounds and my dad gets mad. I won't let him go out alone. Let him get mad all day long, Hayden. He will mm -hmm. thank you later when he doesn't have a, you know, hurting ass or he's just missing and all you find is his shoes. Great show today, guys. Hey, thanks, buddy. Love you, man. Oh, I forgot to mention this. We had a storm three weeks ago, Garrett. It's the same one that hit you. Yeah. It two was uh, two and a half weeks or something. something. I heard the, I fucking heard the weird sound. I heard it. The, the, what does it sound like? I, it sounded like a giant dumpster without wheels being pulled across like a, a asphalt. Like the trumpet, trumpety, but it's like. Yeah. You heard that? I oh. fucking heard it. That's creepy. And I was like, I was telling Melissa, I'm like, I just heard that. And I didn't hear it again, man. I had my phone out. I was ready to go. I was like, come on, do it again. Was this after the storm or before this is the storm? During a storm. Well, okay. It's not raining. There's shitloads of lightning and thunder uh, off in the distance, but it's not raining. It's actually kind of, it feels kind of dry out. So, uh, th and then it eventually rained um, about an hour later, like crazy, but I heard it. So it's storm related. It's got to be storm related. And that's what I always thought, but except for the ones that uh, are in complete blue sky but i heard it i fucking heard it texas and, thunderstorms uh, are the best yeah they're so good. so that was crazy that was nuts and i just wish i could have gotten got it on freaking on my phone but when i heard them all there it is it's real <laughs> holy shit that's crazy uh eric k for two dollars adam old man willow will get you tom is not around Tom, is that some lore? Tom, Tom, no Tom from Midnight's Edge, who might go I to our meetup. Know. I don't no. want to speak for him. He's invited. We did get confirmation from somebody, but I can't. I can't. I don't want to say until he says. Sold out already, huh? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's, you know, it's a mid-sized bar, um, and uh, you know, I can't rent out like giant halls or anything like that right tom plus, bombadil plus, that's a good guess maybe maybe it's tom bombadil well then you know i mean no maybe the Was it maybe the maybe it's the barrow downs maybe so they're uh going to maybe there's mounds there that we don't know about oh. and there's dark spirits uh phoenix on the web for five dollars hello by the way i am listening to Lord of the Rings by Andy Serkis. This is the first time I'm listening to it by Andy Serkis. And it's oh, really so fucking good. good. It's so really, good. really, 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 really fucking good. Um, hello all, if X-Ray Girl wants, I will buy and send her a spirit pendulum used for communication and enchanted, and enchanted to detect, bind, and bond with spirits. No. That's up to her. No. <laughs> I don't want a spirit near me or binding to me or a pendulum. That's um, asking it to come in. You don't want to open it up no, at all. Nope, nope. I, I keep that out. This is a no. no spirit zone. I'm currently watching Buffy season four. And we know what happens to Willow. All right. So she lets those people in. And the show gets make... canceled on Disney Plus and gets removed from the platform? No, that's <laughs> that's the Willow show, not Willow from Buffy. No, she out of nowhere becomes a lesbian and then a villain what? <laughs> in the show. <laughs> that, I need to watch that show, man. It's a great show, dude. Get into it. Especially, we're, I'm, this is the first time I've I've ever watched it like in back and forth order with Angel, and it's really oh, tight. And chronological. It's, is it yeah, much it's really, better than? Okay. It, it's rad. 
It's great. Uh, Matthew Hammond for four ninety nine. Can X Ray Girl go to the Santorium in the Canadian town of Tranquilla, created for people with tuberculosis, where Tom McDonald saw ghosts shooting a music video? Oh, that's where you need to go. I'm oh, looking where cool it is. I don't know where. Oh, it's in BC. That's like across the country. It wasn't um, Canada. Ghosts. It was a couple. That, it's that, on the west coast. I'm on the. Out. Mid East, the maybe. East Coast. There's, there's got to be a sanatorium in Ontario. You're gonna be at the meetup, right? Yeah. Next right go. Yeah, you're gonna be there. Gonna, I did a, you know, if I drive there, it only takes like I think twelve hours. It's not bad. It's twelve hours. That's not, <laughs> that's not that bad. That that isn't that bad. I would do that in a day. To be yeah. honest, driving around in America, twelve hours is like nothing. Yeah, I'll, yeah. like I'll probably leave at like six in the morning. So I'll I'll tell you guys when I leave, so you guys get off the roads. You know it's fine. I get it. <laughs> when we go to Vegas, we make it to Phoenix from here in a day. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. all Texas driving. I love it. I love the Southwest. <laughs> it's like Texas, Texas, Texas all day, and then you get outside. Of yeah, the last you know five hours are are, are, yeah, are like of the other states. Yeah. It takes sixteen hours to drive out of the uh, province in, going west. It's ridiculous. Eric K for two dollars says Garrett never misses a good abduction probing. Probing. I don't want it. They just keep coming to me. I'm just. He, you know what? He sleeps. You know how Garrett sleeps at night with his butt <laughs> up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Like, it's so cute when kids do that. Dog. Though I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Just you know when you hit like thirty, it's time to <laughs> Garrett. Stop. Garrett never <laughs> threw out anymore. Yeah. He's it's just never comfortable. Out That's out how it. I like to sleep. You guys are just shaming my sleep patterns. I'm sleep shaming you. We are. Uh, Carnage Undone for $9.99. You guys really need to get Wendigo, uh, Wendigoon on here. Also, Eric July. Uh, also, hail Eric July. These losers are something else. Um, the internet is something else. Uh, people will stoop to, uh, they will stoop to the lowest of lows. Uh, F and Dave for $10. Holy crap. Did you see Randall K's reveal of the Dan new Vesk. tech? This channel will also be mine. <laughs> <laughs> Dan! Dan could come on here and he could talk about uh, Brazil. There's lots of stuff that goes on in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Like, Brazil's crazy with UFO stuff. We could bring on Dan. And, but he has to sing everything he talks about. He has to sing. <laughs> he probably would, too, though. He probably would. Uh, holy crap, did you see Randall Carlson's reveal of the new tech on the Concrete Podcast? Uh, I, it's in my playlist. Uh, this could literally change the world. Power based on plasmoids. He has working tech in testing right now. Uh, F and Dave for $10. Yeah, uh, Malcolm Bendel, who's been controversial, says says he's got something to show us. Show us. That's all I'm going to say. I love Randall Carlson. Yeah. And he's a smarter guy than I. So I will never, I, I will always love Randall. Okay. Unconditional love for Randall. Um, we'll see. We'll see. That would be crazy. And if it's true, like say he came up with this plasmoid thing, I wouldn't live in the United States. I'd watch your back wherever you go. I'd live in a compound uh, because look what they've done to people who come up with radical stuff like Tesla. You know, look what they've done to him. Uh, the powers that be. Is that true, Is that true Dan? Dan says that he he saw a chupacabra. I would love to hear it. You come on here and talk about it. Yeah, man. Holding back. I love it. I mean, that could have been Ryan Kennel, but <laughs> the hairless cat. Version. They look very like they look like hairless cats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon Sworn for ten dollars. My church just bought a new building. The building has been unoccupied for over a year but so much was left up to that it looked like service had been held for, since last week yeah that, that's weird when people abandon so much stuff that have personal information on it yeah mm -hmm. but quite frankly when you don't have the workers to do it um and in some places that like you don't own it so the owner just boots you and you don't have any time to come back uh, Rich Uncle Cheapskate for nine ninety nine. I once watched this documentary about a bunch of missing people. The only thing connected to them were their association with Bill and Hillary Clinton. Add another Ton. one to the list. 
<laughs> yep. That might that they have their own cluster, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Dave Politi says, okay, we have uh we gotta we gotta remove um, you know, animal attacks, just basically getting lost and uh clinton murders okay so yeah. <laughs> uh casey gregor for ten dollars the story you're talking about is wild still unsolved but a lot of speculation the area is all flat fields and nothingness could have fell in a drainage ditch and will never be seen creepy like Garrett, how, how deep it was Garrett's yeah, story, Garrett yeah. story yeah because yeah. they were they were just flat and how, how like... deep are the dra- well, i mean they could be deep they could be deep well, listen, Greenwich if you're out ditches. in like, you know, I've been out in wheat fields, like in the middle of wheat fields. And yeah, I guess if you like hurt yourself and fell down, it, they'd have a hard time finding you. But again, the dogs. Yeah, but, but but they talked about how it was like not, you would see them in the field. It was like, yeah, low. That, that time of that time of year, the crops really were, down. were much lower than you could see somebody laying down in the field. Yeah celluloid dream for 499 there is an ancient stone tablet discovered dating back almost twelve thousand years scholars translated and it read diablo 3 is better than diablo 2. well that is just categorically false <laughs> that is fucking categorically false thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> cheers all is forgiven with stargate and thank and you thank you we have diablo agree, 2 uh, is we can diablo, be two. diablo 2 is the shit. okay Right, the goat. It. get wrecked, get wrecked. Those those scholars were wrong. Uh, <laughs> Kenny Justice for five dollars. I watch Nukes Top Five, and they find pretty uh, good clips. The newest video shown like a super old video of an alien encounter. It's around six forty four. If interesting, oh, so that is um a collection of UFO videos which I was asking for a couple of shows ago. I'd love to, you know. I, I miss I miss secure team pumping out a video what, what every week right I know it gets tiresome and stuff but and it's hard in this field but uh, secure yeah, team still around though yeah not a lot comes out but there's a lot of backlog of stories and information that you can go through I think Tyler had a hard time and I'm glad he came out of it I'm really it, it just based on what I saw from the outside but I'm glad he came out of it and he seems like he's doing better Eric K for two dollars R I P Suzanne Summers yep. F's in the chat for Suzanne Wait, Summers. What? Yeah, she passed yep. away. Cancer. I'm master herself. Fuck cancer. No way. Sally Struthers, too? No. Not on the same day. It says R.I.P. Sally Struthers, says the happy plague doctor for $5. I mean, she that could be an Eric Jell. I didn't, you know. These are 70s people, by the way. Yeah, Sally maybe Sally you meant Struthers. Suzanne Summers. <laughs> yeah, don't make Sally. Don't make people dead who aren't. She's still alive. She's still alive. But Suzanne Summers is gone. That sucks. So John Ritter and Suzanne Summers gone. Yeah. Uh, love three companies, man. Three's company. That was a fucking great show. I, that is one of the shows door. I did watch. Come right now, come right uh, the two different versions of the. Uh, Dan Vass for 50 uh, Brazilian pesos, which um, uh, comes out to about a buck. Yeah. Uh, Gary is an ancient astronaut. That's true, Dan. You're you're not insulting me. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> All right. Yeah, huh? That's a fact. Uh, Dick Dickerson for $5. Dave has a YouTube channel called Conum Missing Project. Uh, you should have him on. I would love to have him on. And, it, like... Yeah. Certain guests, I hope guests don't like. We're, we're, we're going to change something. So when we have like uh, the Serpent Bros back on, or Jimmy back on, or God knows we get Randall someday, or we have Dave Police, it will be on the main channel. It will be on the the main channel for those special shows. Uh, Bubba and then Doom uploaded for, here. So then of course it'll be uploaded it. here. Yeah, and then it'll be on uh, Spotify and uh, Apple SoundCloud. Music, SoundCloud itunes is apple music right i don't care yeah yeah Am amazon podcasts yeah. amazon mm -hmm. podcasts are we on amazon podcast yet not yet but i did just i'll send you the link again we can send it. oh do i need to do it you have to oh. do it because it's like private information you have all my information you fuck you could ruin I, I forget me. about it i yeah. intentionally forget about it you know <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> all y'all can ruin like x-ray girl has access to the channel yeah it's uh, all y'all can ruin me get to all delete right. no, not right me. Here. i got i got no power here you're like i'm just here so i can have fun <laughs> Bubba Doom for five dollars. Do you remember the interviews Nap did uh, on the Smiley Face uh, murders? I don't know if those were ever solved, but these four one one cases always remind me of them. I vaguely the remember that. I'm gonna have to do Smiley that. Face? Yeah, the Smiley Face murders are uh, the the idea is that it, they're people that end up either committing suicide, jumping into a river, or falling into a river, or getting dumped into a river by a murderer uh, separately. And then there happens to be a smiley face, one of the most ubiquitous symbols around the world, drawn in the vicinity of where they find the body. So that's where they kind of connected them all together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's theories that it's one killer that's out there killing, or it's multiple killers that are, like, together. To me, that one doesn't seem quite as, like, weird as uh, the Missing 411 does. Yep. That one that seems like remi- it could just be a smaller me scale of another yeah. movie a recommendation for X-Ray Girl. I know she hasn't seen it. So have you seen the you've seen the, the Exorcist yeah. X-Ray Girl? Yes. Yes. Do the not original. see the Exorcist 2. It's stupid. Go uh-huh. right to the Exorcist 3 Legion. Freaking great movie. Red Letter Media did a video on it. Uh it's one of my favorite favorite movies. George C. Scott uh and it's uh written and directed by the author william peter blatty and uh it's a creepy so uh basically uh a serial killer um possesses uh the body of a man but it's it's more than just him it's a legion of demons and brad duroff is in it and he's freaking awesome he's awesome in this is he the one that's possessed yeah, he is. It is nuts. It, it is a good. creepy ass. I, oh, first this time is I saw a very it, very interesting premise. I think we rented it at like rehab in like when it came out in 90, 1990. So I was in rehab. It came out um, 90. Yeah, I was born that year. Yeah, good movie. And it's a 4K now. I got it in 4K. It's a great. Ooh, movie. Robert okay. Barnett loves it almost as much as I do. I freaking love that movie. Really underrated film. Uh, Colorado is just made of weird. Denver airport is legendary for this. Nick Levi, 86 for $5. I've got, I don't think I've ever been as sick as I was with the altitude sickness, whatever it was at Denver airport, got off the plane and just started hurling. Really? I was fine on the plane. So I got off the plane, got it, you know, got in the airport, started walking down the airport. I'm like, Oh, I don't feel so good. (laughs) And I was just head was in a trash can. Heard a lot of weird stuff about that airport. Well, there's a lot of weird symbolism. There's some fucking symbolism. bizarre symbolism. Yeah. yeah. Government that, underground facilities. Remember when Jesse Ventura did a consp- the conspiracy show? He does a whole Denver just airport thing. Just ask a question. Oh just ask a question. The first thing I find when I put Denver airport weird stuff, it contains the Illuminati headquarters. That's, yeah. Supposedly. Psh, why not? That's one of the theories. Bro. Why not? Well, one of the theories was they did a lot of tunneling. A lot of tunneling under it, which I guess you need to do, but they did a lot. Uh, Buster Nut Smash for five dollars says, "I've always thought uh, that at least some of these missing people fell into sinkholes or unknown underground caverns. That could happen here in Texas. Why isn't it happening all day long in Texas? Because we are stupid with those things, mm. sinkholes and like weird cavern. There's Garrett. There's caverns everywhere around here, like everywhere." It's nuts. Yeah, we have a lot. Desert Fox for five dollars. Mountain lions will drag you away another location to eat. They will. But That's they what I was generally thinking. stay away from people. They they dude, I lived amongst mountain lions my entire life in California. But they will scavenge. N- never saw one. They will scavenge, yes. Yeah. But I never saw one. Ever. I saw f- like a footprint once. Mm. Once. Uh, never mourn for 20 euros off topic. As always, that little young lady who comped cosmic summit is in Turkey visiting Tepes. And she literally found a T pillar sitting in someone's front yard waiting while on a tour bus. So obviously a tiny civilization. Yes, cool. that that's rad. 
uh, who comped Cosmic Summit. Are you was talking the- about the Australian uh, woman that was there? She was a speaker. The she was a speaker? Her. She, she Australian speaker. or British? I think she was Australian. I think she was British. No. She got a channel. Me all neither. sounds fucking insane to me. All sounds like it's all silly. silly. Right now. So, all sounds all sounds like pre English before we perfected it here in the states, right, Gareth? <laughs> yes, before it was evolved into what yes. it is today. Uh, Sven Dragon for two dollars. Third person to recommend watching Asha Logos videos. Asha Logos videos. I will do that. Uh, it's like listening to Art Bell. Says Joey seventy five four ninety nine. Highest of praise. Highest of all praise. Right. Okay. Cheers. The chat has. Uh, and sent the the hat around. They got two bucks. Great show, ladies and gents. Props all around. Cheers. And once again, one name, autodidactic. Def a good definitely a good guest. That's a good name. I like autodidactic. Uh Joe C eight one eight pure blood for five dollars. Hey guys, love the show. I was wondering if they have heard if you heard the audio of Pelosi calling into Art Bell to speak with Malachi Martin. It's on YouTube. What? What? Wait, what? Uh, what I, I watched the first three Malachi Martins. So is that's a Indian demon. Uh, so coast? a demon literally called into Malachi Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I must take you out. And then he went out. Yeah, she, You're she the Malachi. No, we Martin. we got to find that. I did not. So know okay. That. So she called into coast to coast to talk to him. Probably. I'm trying to find it. I Dude, can. she's a thousand like, years old. I so. still have four more of those episodes to listen to. Oh, how to get rid of demon? Oh, it's 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 being scrubbed. Everything I'm finding, I can't find it. Uh, old cranky gamer for five dollars. Men who hunt boar with a gun and not a spear need a breast stretcher. <laughs> I'm. I'm uh, What's a breast stretcher? I don't know, but uh, it sounds like he's saying. Hunt him with a spear, you pussy. Oh, I feel like you might. Toshi oh, Yar- I do that when I have a 50 Toshi cal. Yar-, Yar for, uh, not Tasha Yar, it's <laughs> Toshi Yar for five Australian dollars. Hey, guys, you should look up Archie's archives. He has some awesome Russian missing mysteries hiking. Ooh, that'd be good. Uh, Jose A. Taco for $1.99. Nipple Mountain just outside of Fort Stockton, Texas. Best view. There's a Nipple Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. There, is it like in uh, like Northwest Texas? There's not a lot of mountains in Texas. That's uh, for sure. That's called Nipple Peak Mountain. N- nipple Mountain or Nipple Peak? Mountain. Yeah, because yeah, wouldn't the nipple be the peak? Yeah, of the bre- of peak breast peak. mountain <laughs> of Tit Mountain. Uh, it should that be. looks like a nipple. Yeah. It should it be. Does. It should be called Tit Mountain and Nipple Peak. Go tit. I'm changing it. Oh my okay. god. I did find the Nancy Pelosi thing. It does actually kind of sound like her. It's the Adam, we listened to it. It was the the caller that yeah. was Jewish that was saying that should Is it okay? Is, is it okay to accept it? the authority of Christ and whatnot if I'm Can Jewish? I get the exorcism, but not she and still be Jewish, like basically. She kind of sounds like her. What? She's not though. I didn't get I didn't She's get supposed Nancy. to be Catholic, right? Here, didn't she pretend she was Catholic? Good um, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Yeah, thank you. Good. I don't think that's um, going to work. If you no, it are in that like condition, a... if you think you fulfill all those conditions in your life, you should apply to the local bishop, the bishop of the diocese in which you live. I don't know if you... Better find her. Um, can you hear me? Uh, Eva? I would bring her on the air for a moment. Uh, she, her Eva. name is Eva. Eva, are you there? Yes. Oh, it's Eva. Yes. Uh, you're on. My name is Eva. Eva, all right, Eva. You, are, I'm sorry, you're on the air with uh, uh, Dr. Martin. How do you do, Dr. Martin? Good morning, Eva. Kind of sounds like it her. It says a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. I'm. My name is Bill uh, Smith. I can hear it. You know, maybe she was. So, if you're totally possessed by a demon and you're in Congress, uh, can can you still get exercised? And uh, oh, I thought you, you meant Congress, res- like. No, not that kind of Congress. And Father Malachi Martin would probably respond with, no, you're a lost soul since you're in Congress. <laughs> oh, or Senate, whatever. E- either one, they both. Shit. Bjorn to kill. Bjorn to kill. That's a good name. Five dollars. I live 30 minutes from Canby. It's so flat you can watch your dog run for hours. Somebody did something to that kid. The chat for $2. Also, getting the guy from the Y-Files is epic. We're trying... He like the, the, the Wi-Fi is a big channel. That's a big. 
mm-hmm. channel that requires he's pumping out stuff too. Constantly. Pumping out stuff like crazy. Uh, he's got people, and it's a well-run machine, but it makes you very he's busy. Excited. I I caught his eye in a live stream, and I was like, "Hey, would love you, to, you know, Forbidden Frontier." And he was like, "Oh yeah, like I got to hit up X-ray Girl. Like I'm sorry, like I really want to do it." And I was like, "Okay, <laughs> hey, All right. I'll tell him." Like, I totally get it. That's kind of the the content creator thing. It's like, yeah, we're gonna do it, and then like, yeah, you do it in like a year. You yeah, know, that's like, that's, that's acceptable. You know, I think too many people get like butthurt over that stuff. It's like, no, I mean, if you do this stuff long enough, you understand. Like, it yeah. it, it gets busy. You don't. It's nothing personal. It's like, oh, I just lost track of time. You know, I've got like uh, rings of power landed, and it took over my life or something. You know, something like that. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Yeah, it, it's nothing. Per- we're not trying to be dicks or anything, and I, I, I would never take it personal. Like when he, he comes on when he can, you know. It'll happen when it happens. It the stars align. Happen. I sub. I watch all the stuff, and they have monster live streams. Great live streams. Good live streamer. He does such fantastic videos. Yeah, true citizen zero. Welcome as a traveler. Uh, hail fellow travelers. Says the Ark Spartan. Uh, then we have when the Jews return to Zion and comets rip the sky and the Holy Roman Empire rises, then you and I must die from the eternal sea. He rises, says Abigor. Uh, right after the total skips from the sun off, oh, right after the, the total skips of the sun, I found the weird potted plant. All right, that's getting weird. Uh, Dexie's. Kessel runners for twenty dollars, not midnight's runners. Midnight's runner is Kessel runners. Speaking of Nancy Pelosi, uh, have you seen the clip of YouTube of Chuck Schumer telling an inv- uh, visible spirit to get out of his chair in the Senate in front of senators? No, but Chuck that'd be funny. Was he going? That motherfucker is not real. <laughs> <laughs> not real. M Juke 84 says six months. Awesome. Love the show and the panel. That is all. Thank you. Garrett. This one just says Garrett. Adam, you have been on fire lately, especially your tweets and the highly their highly entertaining surprise appearance. Oh, and the highly entertaining surprise appearance on CC. What's CC? Um oh, Cobra Cast. Cobra Cast. Okay. Oh. Cobra Cast. Okay. Cobra Cast. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And that's it. Jeremy was glitching out. So. Oh, I saw I saw oh, some yeah, of that. I saw some clips. I yeah. saw some of that. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy always... Bass came in with a just a big whale bone, and I'm like, oh man, I should get in on this. He always shows that whale bone off. It he does. Cool, but you know what? Oh, you know cool what? Jeremy bone. doesn't show off the penis bone he got at the oh. Vegas meetup. <laughs> That's he got true. A <laughs> penis bone of a fucking whale. <laughs> no walrus. Think, no like, manatee. Manatee like, is it walrus it or man. manatee? I thought it was a one of those. It's water. fucking some sea creature with a big old dong, okay? Yep. That has a bone. Yep. <laughs> Jeremy Jeremy Yo, owns one, but he doesn't whip it out as much as Dan Vasque whips out his pelvic bone or whatever. Sorry, it's Perky Breast Mountain on I-10 by Fort Stockton. Oh, oh. I know, dude, I drive by every time I go to San Diego, we drive by Fork Stock Stockton both ways. That's where I get gas. Cause there's not a lot of places to get gas. Wow. Best thing about driving through West Texas, my boner is thicker than Jeremy's. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Crazy. Uh, he said bone, not boner. Oh, his bone is thicker. Well, that's probably what he meant. <laughs> the ladies like yeah. girth. That's what I heard. They like girth. I'm not sure. Yeah. Jeremy's is just it's really not the long. length. It's the girth. Is that what you're saying? That's, like, that's like what they're stump. saying. I don't know. That's what they're saying. Once long and thin when you can have thick and girthy. Sorry. They're the ones who go to the I'm hot sorry. dog shop all the time. <laughs> as soon as it came out of your head, was, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I don't feel good about that. Dan's hey, going to agree with me. Right, Dan? Are you can't go- we have I- just right, you know? Hey, just a little bit of hope. Malcolm says. <laughs> just average, all right? Average. <laughs> I got to say, in the chat, what's up? Andreas? What's up, Andreas? I got to say, it was good timing for us to get in and out of Europe when we did. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. What? Those what videos. Was sorry? Uh, good timing. Yeah. We, yeah, it was good yeah, timing. Uh, I'll keep you posted. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to, uh, Dan Vasquez gay. What are you Dan, gay? Dan. 
You are. Gay. <laughs> Thanks, Hollywood. Well, he is. He is. But it's okay to have gay friends, like I've said before. You know, it's not about Dan being gay. It's not about me virtue signaling. We're friends. I can't wait to write him a song. <laughs> can't wait. See Dan Bass is in the chat right now. You can go to his channel and go subscribe. Oh, you know what? Damn, Garrett. <laughs> I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add 25 minutes on that video tonight. I'm gonna make you come out oh, with it tomorrow, no. you son of a bitch. Be out tomorrow. <laughs> I'm gonna list every ginger <laughs> race swap that's ever happened. Ever. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I have a list. Uh, I asked for it from Bounding in the Comics like a year ago. I'm like, hey, do you guys got a list? <laughs> We got a, they have a running an list going. That. That'd be a good article to write. Well, they they did. <laughs> They've written like six articles on it. But uh, yeah, they have a running list of all the ginger, all the ginger That's pretty side. Bad, yeah. It's pretty fucking long. Really bad. It's ridiculous. Uh, can't wait for South Park, dude. Cannot wait for South Park on. The, I hope they don't dude, flip it on us. But and the cope, know. the cope on the internet about South Park is so funny. They're like, they they they're not really anti woke. They're really just trying to represent. Come on, it's, they went soft on the pandemic episode. It's South Park. They're going to go after everybody. That's yes, what they, they do. Are. That's what they the should. Only time, do. The only time they, the only time they went soft was the pandemic episode. But the streaming wars, holy shit, was that good? My pee pee. <laughs> I got all the pee pee. Panderverse. That's right. It's in the name. Panderverse. The Panderverse. The Panderverse. Uh, what do you got coming up, Garrett? Uh, editing this video, and tomorrow we got Bay Staff Monday Bay on staff. Adam's channel uh, with uh, Andreas Exertus, Flawed, Darth Call, George, Giant Slayer. George. Uh, George. 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 And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is Normal World. We're actually working on a Halloween special. Oh. So, uh, oh. It's all sketches. All sketches oh. all the time for the Halloween special, so putting this stuff together. That's cool. Yeah. So check it out. We have a lot of fun. Adam, you're working on a video? I am. I, I have been filming stuff around uh, my property. I took a, a nice long trek through my woods, and they're just beautiful, and I want to share them. So I am making a little little video of that. It will probably go on my channel uh, in a couple days, maybe tomorrow. I was uh, I was busy for one wanting today and walking through my forest uh, but then uh yeah base half monday and then uh, my daily show i moved my friday night jams to my locals so on fridays i just go live on my locals channel and, and jam out i've got been working on music actually i got uh i took my, my girl's bass i got my i got a bass now i got my i'm actually surrounded by guitars you can't see them but there's there's seven guitars around me and uh i love it i, I love having my guitars and uh Digging back into music. It's a lot of fun. So, to jam. Awesome sauce. We should, Dan. Does I sound like a grocery store lady? What does that mean? <laughs> what is, what? Shut it's up, really Dan. Okay, you know. What does that mean? It sounds like a grocery store. Like where? In, in Brazil? A ghost orb. Is a ghost orb yeah. Adam in your room? <gasps> What's a grocery store lady sound like in Brazil? It's, it's There's a two up. two for one special on crickets, <laughs> on a bag of crickets <laughs> to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking like Indonesia. Uh, you ever see the the Grand Tour where they're uh, they're in uh, Cambodia and they stop it, you know, with the microphone? Okay, got it, got it. <laughs> oh my mic, my mic kind of does. Oh. I don't know. Uh, I can we get a price check, please? Price, price check, oh price check please, on a whale penis bone. Whale Clean penis bone. Nice customer oil. assistance oh. in the garden area. Oh, there's a great grand tour where they go to Cambodia and like they go to this restaurant and it's like spiders, uh, crickets, beetles uh, to eat. Like that's what they because during Pol Pot, that's what people were forced forced to eat because they went communist, right? Because they went communist. And even though it's never been applied properly, they applied it properly and they killed all the people with who could speak other languages, who wore glasses, uh, killed a quarter of his population, and then they had to eat bugs. Bugs. Eat the bugs. Watch the killing fields. Communism. Communism. Tried 
it Correct. works because it's never been tried except when it's been tried and then you if you're alive you eat bugs yeah if you lucky. make it you're lucky uh speaking of communist x-ray girl what do you got coming up um, I have Chris Gore coming on Dadcast this week at 6 p.m. Eastern, so sub to poor choices. And then, um, it's about time you had the guy on that you stole the I show know. name yeah. from. <laughs> I know. It took a while. It took a while. Uh, but, and then I'm starting a new show with Wicked Virtue and Disbrew called Saucy Saturdays where we talk about pop culture and we just found out Disbrew used to watch big brother and so uh <laughs> of course he did of I course he did. watched that love island show or whatever that shit you, you guys are watching the, the with the milfs milf manor milf manor yeah so he definitely that was that. like i thought it was just because he was trying to make fun of it i think he actually legitimately enjoyed yeah, big brother kind of thing. back in the day so yeah yeah uh, did you ever watch Rob has a podcast? Disper, he's not watching this, but uh, ask him if you you guys never watch Rob, Rob has a podcast. Has a podcast? No, I can try to ask him. No, I haven't heard of it. Quick story: the guy who talked me into doing this said, "Hey, we can make money," and I'm like, "I don't want to do it. I'm, like, we're not going to make fucking money. It's that's a retarded statement. We'll never make money, but I want to do it because it's fun." Right. So he he did a little work with Rob has a podcast and they were big, huge, big brother guys. But it helped inspire me. I'm like, hey, let's do like Talking Dead for other shows. Let's just not do it for Walking Dead because it sucks now. So let's do Ash versus Evil Dead or Westworld or Game of Thrones, whatever. You know, a million people do Game of Thrones. But I was trying to think of sh other shows people weren't doing. That's what that's how this channel started. Cool. So it's kind of got a weird connection to a show I've never fucking seen and never will because Big Brother looks stupid. I don't know how you can watch that garbage. That's the show that I, my wife was watching it, and it has some kind of weird multiverse aspect to it this season. Wait, multiverse? Yeah, so there's like a, a I'm house. I'm so fucking sick what? of multiverses. There's you know a what house, sucks? And there's like other people come oh. in, and that and the house changes when there's other. Oh my god! Oh my god! Again. Fuck so multiverse! Dumb. And you know what sucks is Invincible season two is coming out, right? And it's multi. It's all <sighs> multiverse. No, Dude, uh, stop it! No. The trail the Robert Kirkman promises it'll be different, and it is a little different if you've read the comic books. It it's well, it's more coherent. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. they That'll explain it, yeah. and you will know where you're going in it. Uh, Invincible season one, uh, aside from some woke shit, uh, pretty good, pretty good. Liked it. So we got the trailer. Trailer just came out. Uh, I've got a video coming out tomorrow. I'm I'm Garrett. I'm mostly done. Yeah, like, I'm okay. mostly done. Yeah, I got most of it done. Uh, it's just a little news video. Uh, and then, uh, depending on what happens, strike ends. Somebody gets fired. They decide to like put out more cringe. Fire all the daredevil writers. I don't know. Something will happen. Something will happen, or it doesn't. Uh, next weekend, I'll be in Palm Springs with Mrs. Nerdrotic, hanging out mm -hmm. with well. I'm saying the L.A. version of hanging out with Jimmy and uh, Graham, which means you're literally in the same room with them. Did you know that's L.A. speak for? I had oh. lunch with Robert De Niro means you I were in the same restaurant. Yeah. I hang out with Randall. You were in the yeah. same building. Yeah. <laughs> you were in the conference room. You were in the same speak. city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're going to that. It's called CPAC. It's a very unfortunate name for some. It, I don't Change know what it's. Change your name. That's just yeah, I'll it's it something about ancient civilizations and consciousness and stuff. Okay. But any excuse to go to Palm Springs, dude. Yeah. I love Palm that Springs. That was rad. Nice that was fun. One. It's a great place, isn't it? It's honeymoon. super clean. Like when you see a homeless person, you notice it. You're like, whoa, that's Oops. weird. It's like how where I live. When I went to L.A. for Palm Springs, and it was like homeless Mecca. Central. And then I came back home, and I was like, oh, yeah, this is what it's like. It's nice and clean. People respect their it's, their city that they live in. It's bougie. It's really nice. The malls are nice. We saw we saw into the Spider Verse there. We did. We mm. did. The place is so nice. Yeah, super nice place. All right, so that's uh, what we got coming up. Uh, by communist. Two more super chats. Two. Okay. Uh, it upsets me that Gary hasn't read the Haunted Mesa yet. I sent him a copy of it, and it's super relevant to tonight's episode. Sorry, Jimmy Collins, for five dollars. I still have it. It's it's going into my paranormal library, but uh, 
You know, blame uh, Marvel and uh, Hollywood for going on strike. <laughs> Uh, something about Pol Pot doesn't usually, uh, people don't usually know, but he gave speeches where he referred to himself as a warrior for social justice. No shit. Really? Wow. For real? And he also hugely influential in, hey. uh, Rob, what is it? Rob a He was, he was also hugely influenced by, influenced okay. By Ro Robespierre. Robespierre. Ro Robespierre. Well, oh. considering... I mean, he's generally an inspiration for social justice work. They won't say it, but uh, they act just like him. Like, oh, I uh, people who disagree with me just need to die and eat bugs. The Jackals of Terra Argument. Argument? Argentum. 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 Argentum for $10. Thank you. All right. Now, Adam's about to fall asleep. Thanks for hanging with us for 21 extra <laughs> minutes, Adam. Thanks, I appreciate Adam. you. Yeah, really yeah. I love it. Straining love yourself it. there. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next week. Again, I will be in Palm Springs, but we're still going to have a show. Still going to have a show at the same time. So, What are we talking about is, next week? Do we know? Uh, we'll find out. Know. We'll find out. <laughs> I'll think of something. Spooky. Something spooky. Something spooky. I have kind of an idea that's kind yeah. of something that's kind of spooky, but we got to mm -hmm. see if there's like some good places to find information on it. It'll be a so I'll let you know. Uh, thank you to the Mod Rodics. You guys are wonderful. Thanks to everyone who left a super chat donation. You helped keep the lights on. Thanks for supporting the show because it's tons of fun. And I hope really you guys is. had fun too. And we'll see you next Sunday, 5 30 p.m. Central Time. Ciao. See you. Bye. Welcome, travelers, to the fringes of reality where the strange and mysterious meet and the thin veil between fact and fiction is torn. Welcome to the Forbidden Frontier.